the president. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Christine Lowe, and I am your Nevada California Regional Alumni Association. And thank you so much for joining us today. So as we are uh, admitting our uh, cadets, I will go ahead and share the screen and introduce you to our new 2023-2024 alumni board. So just give me a minute to share the screen with you and we will share this introductory video. Let's see, kind of move this little menu here. Okay, I'll go ahead and share the screen with you now. Oh, hang on one moment. I'm so sorry about that. Let's go ahead and let's play this video again. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. I forget that I have to go back. Share the sound. Share. Can you all see the video? Okay, great. And share the sound, share the video. All right, let's do this again. So if you have an opportunity to check this, uh, to use your cameras to click onto this QR code, go for it. We will play this video again uh, before uh, the second uh, after the break. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. All right.
right, I'm going to go ahead and proceed and share our main presentation. All right, there we go. Okay, welcome once again to the third annual Honors in Action Boot Camp. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be with you all today. This is a, a special event, especially for me personally, uh, but this, I am part of a team of a growing team of alumni officers. We are your Nevada California Regional Alumni Association, and we are so happy to give this presentation uh, for you. Okay, so every year we have uh, we do our annual cadence for boot camp. And to the left in this photograph is my grandfather, uh, Vicente Gomez is his name. And he was a, a very special uh, man in my life. Uh, what was amazing about grandpa was that he was only about five, five. Uh, so it was cool that I was a little taller from him, but he still had authority. <laughs> he had this booming voice. Uh, he was a sergeant that taught those two, um, their paratroopers. Uh, but here's a little amazing story about him, which I've never shared in another boot camp, in a previous boot camp, in that um, while he was dating my grandmother, he got into a terrible car accident. He was crossing the street and a car hit him. He flew up in the air, but because of his training, he only had a broken leg. So his training really served him well. And um, he had a little bit of a limp, but again, he still had a presence and he had a booming voice that I wish I had. <laughs> but every year we have this cadence. And so you are welcome to keep your microphones off if you wish, but I am going to <laughs> perform this boot camp cadence and you could repeat after me with or without the microphone, but we'll go ahead and get started. So, I belong to PTK. I belong to PTK. I belong to PTK. I, belong to PTK. I will conquer HIA. I will conquer HIA. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you've been told. PTK wears blue and gold. PTK wears blue and gold. HIA won't make you small. HIA won't make you small. Because I stand here brave and tall. Because I stand here brave and tall. Win awards is what I do. Win awards is what I do. With my team, new and true. With, With my, my team, team, new and true. And true. Never doubt a word I say. Never, Never doubt, doubt a word I say. say. TK rules the day. TK rules the day. NB. NB. CA. I am PTK, huh? I, I am PTK. PTK. Huh. Awesome. All right. <laughs> well done, everybody. Okay. All right. We have some very special guests uh, this, this morning uh, in Georgia. We also have the Georgia region in attendance today. So welcome. So I'd like to introduce uh, or welcome our first guest, Dr. Susan Edwards. And that's the big change since the last boot camp is that she is now a doctor. So 
Uh, so great to have you here, uh, Susan, Dr. Susan. She is the Associate Vice President of Honors Programming and Undergraduate Research with Phi Theta Kappa Headquarters or the Center for Excellence. And we also have another special guest and it's actually uh, the advisor, uh, Nicole Barbary of Chafee College, the Beta Kappa Pi chapter uh, over in Rancho Cucamonga, California. I am so glad that you fared well after Tropical Storm uh, Hillary. Um, but we are so excited to hear your presentation and how your chapter emerged from out of nowhere to uh, a five-star chapter. So we're really, really lucky to have you here today. So I'm gonna give you a brief a boot camp overview. Uh, so the part, first part will be your honors in action basic training. So again, I want you to give me seven. So between, a ten, between now and 11.55, we might finish sooner, we're not sure yet, but the first um, presentation will be Honors in Action 101, and this will be presented by Dr. Edwards. Uh, I will be giving a presentation of breaking down the Honors in Action rubric, and I'm super excited to share that with you because I've never given this, given this presentation before. And then after my presentation, we will have a very small break so that I could prepare for uh, the presentation Citing it, Cite it Right uh, by Sal Adada, who will present on how to properly cite your honors and action resources. And then the second part will include a 45 to 60 minute gung-ho honors and action workshop. This will uh, allow you to meet uh, new people. Uh, that includes advisors, uh, members, uh, chapter officers, as well as alumni. And uh, in your email, you should have received your uh, Honors in Action uh, Survivals Checklist. And uh, after that, we'll take a very small break and then uh, follow. And then afterward, we will have a, a presentation from the Beta Kappa Pi chapter at Chief College. There'll be some final words of inspiration and we'll see if our special guest shows up. And we do have a surprise. We are giving away prizes. This is from an alumni angel and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. And then give some uh, final announcements and thank you to everyone who is taking part of this Honors in Action Bootcamp. Uh, I did mention 60 minutes is actually, it could be between 45 and 60 minutes but this breakout room will be provided for either each chapter or each group of members. I think this year we're gonna have a random group of participants, so you'll expand your network. And this will come in handy, especially if you plan to attend our fall leadership conference in a couple of months from now. If you wanna decide on a facilitator, have a pen and paper handy during the workshop and then follow the bootcamp survival guide because there's new stuff this year. So I will go ahead and stop sharing. I'm so excited for uh, our uh, first guest, but before this, I'd like to introduce you to Faustina Washburn. She is a, a wonderful right-hand uh, officer, um, a dear friend of mine, and she will introduce you to our first guest speaker, Faustina. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Susan Edwards is like the sweetest person you'll run into at international headquarters. She is the uh, Associate Vice President of Honors Programming and Undergraduate Research. She joined Phi Theta Kappa Headquarters staff in 2007, so she's got some time under her belt. Susan coordinates work with the Phi Theta Kappa Honors Program Council, the Honors Case Study Challenge, the Program for International Honors Institute, the Faculty Scholar, Con Scholar Conference, the Leadership Development Studies, the Mosul and Marshall Awards and edits the Honors Program Guide and the Civic Scholar. She does a lot. She's a very busy, busy person. What? She's got a light side. She lives in Houston with her husband, Jeff, and she has the two most beautiful, wonderful, awesome kitties, Lizzie and Tabitha, or Izzy, Izzy. I guess I said it wrong. And she loves to travel, and she's been to 81 nations on seven different continents. That girl gets around. Welcome, Susan. Take it away. Thank you, Faustina. I like that. I get around. Uh, thinking of the Beach Boys song right now. Um, but thank you, uh, 
again, Faustina, to Christine, and to the entire Nevada, California alum, regional alumni um, chapter, award-winning alumni chapter, and most distinguished alumni chapter in 2022. You do incredible work, and I'm really happy to be a small part of it. Um, so, um, Christine, would you like me to share my screen and, and share slides? Okay. I thought so, but I wanted to be sure. There we go. All right, can everybody see the slide that says HIA basics? Well, and and congratulations to all of you and uh, to, for being here this, this morning. It's this afternoon in Houston, just so you know. And as you can tell, I'm really not ghostly, um, but it looks like that because it's already 104 degrees and it's really, really sunny outside because we haven't had rain in over a month. So, and, and given pale skin and white hair, and sunshine uh, coming in. I've been trying to monitor it or get it to be a little bit better. Um, but when I see you in person, you'll see that I can be a lovely color um, <laughs> and, and not completely washed out. But let me talk to you about honors in action. I know that there are so many chapters in Nevada, California who know how to do this very well. So I probably have some veterans um, who are here today and can really tell you a lot about honors in action. And I think that maybe there are some people who are really new to Phi Theta Kappa and maybe haven't participated in an honors in action project before. So I'm going to do some of the basics and then do some of the things that, that really you want to consider as you're developing an honors in action project. We appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, it's part of Phi Theta Kappa's mission, the second part of the mission to provide opportunities for college students to grow as scholars and leaders. So throughout this process, if you're thinking, well, you know, that's a lot of work, or I don't know how to do that. Um, this is meant to be a team project and it is meant to be a growth experience for all of us. Um, and so I'll talk about that in, in working with collaborators or coaches, since this is the first day of uh, football season, and, you know, I, I can say this because I don't think any Nevada, California teams are playing today. Um, go Irish. Uh, yeah. Notre Dame can win today. They're kicking off the season in Dublin. So one or two members is all it takes. There are Phi Theta Kappa chapters that have a huge number of officers or people who are active, but there are just as many, if not more chapters that really have a small group of very committed people who are working on college project and honors in action and just know that for a team we're really looking at a small team it can be a large team we just want you to be able to work together with somebody else and hopefully when people see your passion for your research and your project that they'll come and join you and be a part of honors in action it really lays the foundation for your chapter again i know there are lots of that nevada california chapters that have done really well with honors in action. Um, we are honoring Miracosta College this year in the 2023 edition of Civic Scholar. And it's, it's not at all unusual to have Nevada, California chapters um, make it into Civic Scholar. So we're really pleased with that. But maybe your chapter is just beginning in honors in action and you're laying the foundation. You're gonna be the people who leave the legacy. You can earn five-star status by working on an honors in action project. So you really do get recognition for working through this process. So you can complete the honors in action project anytime between January 1st, 2023 and December 31st, 2023. So note that December 20, uh, 31st date, because of course we have passed um, by about eight months, January 1st, but there is still time. You can do a great honors in action project, you can do a, an award-winning honors in action project between now and December 31st. And then Hallmark Award entries, the very last part of working on an honors in action project is doing your honors in action Hallmark Award entry. Those are due January 7th, 17th, excuse me, January 17th, 2024. So no, you've, you've finished the project. And then the Hallmark Award entry is due January 17th, 2024. 
OneNote for Nevada, California. They are due, uh, the entries are due by 5 p.m. Central Time. So 3 p.m. for you. It's, it's maybe the one disadvantage from being in, you know, in your, your region since you have, well, until I guess last week, beautiful weather almost all the time. Not so much last week. So honors and actions, a holistic process. So I want to say a few things about that. It's all about intentional, informed service. Remember that word intentional and remember the word informed because going through the honors and action process, you want to think about those things that you're doing that are intentional. When you get to the very end of the process and doing your honors and action hallmark award entry, um, you'll notice that you'll be asked about that intention. Um, and about being informed before you make a choice for your action. It's based on the academic investigation or exploration of Phi Theta Kappa's honor study topic. So the honor study topic is the foundation of honors in action. That's where you have that academic exploration come in. The topic this year is the art and science of play. We're in the second year of the art and science of play. Um, and Christine mentioned there are seven themes and she said, give me seven, and seven themes from which you can choose. They're all interdisciplinary. There's something for everybody there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about them. There are two things that you need, and you have one of them because Christine sent out the honors program guide last night. So the honors program guide, the 2022-2023 honors program guide is really important. It's an introduction to the honor study topic and it's an introduction to honors in action. So you wanna have that guide with you. You can get a hard copy from the PTK store or um, you can get a PDF uh, like the one that Christine sent. You're welcome to copy that, to share it, to have everybody looking at the guide. It's, it's one of the important pieces of material you need to do honors in action. The other one is the honors in action planning rubric because it's also the honors in action judging rubric. So the rubric, the very top part of the rubric, the, where you get the most points is available in the honors program guide on pages 24 through 26. You can also find it on at ptk.org under the um, Hallmark Awards pages. So wherever you find that, get a copy now, plan with the end in mind so that you know all the pieces that you need to have with your honors in action project. So the honors program guide and the honors in action planning rubric are very important. We recommend keeping a journal as you go through this process. So you remember you know, why you chose your theme, what things you considered, well, what are your sources? Um, Sal is, Adona is gonna tell us about APA citations, for example, a little bit later this morning. You can write those citations out now so that you're not worried about them at the end of the process. You're working from the beginning with the academic investigation. So one of the things you can keep in your journal, of course, are those APA citations. You can keep in the journal an outline of the kinds of things that are in the rubric so you know what you need to pick. You know, we have a journaling guide in the honors program guide with a lot of questions and things you might think about to put in the journal. It can be electronic, it can be a hard copy. You can write in pencil or crayon if you want, be very old school um, or very young um, and, and write your journal. Have more than one person keep it so that you, you've got a number of people who have that in your chapter. And then I think this is easy with this honor study topic, but always remember that it's the honor study topic that's the basis, the foundation of honors in action. Your theme that you select of the seven is the lens through which you study the um, honors or the honor study topic. So always remember you're studying the art and science of play. The theme is how you get into the art and science of play. Sometimes that's forgotten. You know, once you pick your theme and you're off and running, people want to work with their theme and they forget that the honor study topic is really important. All right, so here's the whole process. I mean, look at that. It fits on a half a slide, albeit with very small print, but still it fits on half a slide. There are three main parts to honors in action. It's the academic investigation, the investigate and analyze, the strategizing and leading, that's the action piece of honors in action, and then the assessing and reflecting. And that's the honors in action 
um, hallmark award entry, although we, we recommend reflecting throughout the process of honors in action. So I've already mentioned that you want to review the honors program guide. You want to set research objectives. You're also during the process going to set action objectives and collaboration objectives. You want two or three of each of those object objectives. They can be um, anything. You know, research objectives can be, well, how many people would you like to get on your team? How many academic sources would you like to, uh, or do you think that you might utilize? Um, it might be inviting your research librarian to work with you. I mean, a research librarian is a super coach during Honors in Action. They know databases, they know academic sources, they know how to find things. Um, I highly recommend getting to know them um, and, and inviting them to work with you and maybe um, do some, some kind of workshops with you or just help you through this process um, as you're, you're growing in your academic research. But those are the kinds of things, two or three, um, with your, your action collaborations it's all or your action objectives, it's going to depend on your research conclusions because those things have to be connected. And then your collaboration objectives, you look at the rubric, you need to have collaborators on campus who are not part of Phi Theta Kappa, and you need collaborators from the community. So just keep in mind with your objectives that you want um, co collaborators in some way for both of those categories. And it's really important. This is a case when you look at the rubric, if you only have collaborators on campus or you only have collaborators in the community, but you don't have the other, you, you just get uh, really docked points. And that's a place where you can lose four out of six points for just having one group of, of collaborators. It doesn't have to be a lot of collaborators, but you wanna make sure that there's somebody from the community, somebody from campus who's not part of Phi Theta Kappa. Um, and Susan, then the other thing, yes. Susan, I am so sorry to interrupt you. So for some reason, I'm um, my screen is frozen and I wasn't sure if uh, anyone else was experiencing the same thing. I'm on the second slide right now. Okay, yeah, I know I've moved beyond the second slide. Let me see if I can. Um, nope, I don't know no, if you could subtitles. stop sharing and then reshare it. Yeah, let me do that. Okay. Yeah. My only little button that I'm seeing is actually, let me go to get to more because it's telling, I don't want to leave. That's not what I need to do. Let me open this up. I am but looking for those, As we're uh, working this out, um, these presentations will be, uh, will be distributed. Uh, I would say go. no later than the end of the month, and that also includes the video, so not to worry. Okay. Try sliding your mouse up and down at the bottom of the screen. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So I've got... Okay, so I'm at the HIA process. Yeah, that's okay. where we were. Okay, great. Okay, I guess that's working. Okay, let me, I'm going to move all your beautiful faces so that I can see. On there. So I mentioned um, mentioning uh, setting objectives, you know, just the other thing with collaborators is to make sure you have a communication plan with your collaborators. The rubric asks about how you communicate with your collaborators and you want to think of that in advance and set up that that um, that plan and that communication so that you can write about that when you get to the last part of that. All of these objectives, objectives should be measurable. You know, you can have someone come in and talk to you about SMART or SMARTER goals. We have a unit on that in the um, Phi Theta Kappa Leadership Development Studies curriculum. There are lots of ways to see that, but you need to be able to measure your goals at the end. Um, you're going to, for the first part of this, um, besides reviewing the Honors Program Guide, you want to in setting research objectives, you want to develop a research question. You're going to analyze um, and identify and analyze academic sources. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and then uh, develop some research conclusions. The research conclusions are really important because the research conclusions will, what is, will be what leads you to your action. Don't pick your action before you have finished 
that investigate and analyze process. That's really important. And then you are going to, add, from your research conclusions, identify a real world problem. You set those objectives, you develop a plan of action, um, you identify the collaborators and you execute your plan um, based on your academic research into the art and science of play. And then the last part, assess and reflect, there's a part of the rubric in the Honors in Action Hallmark Award entry that's called impact. And it's really about your reflection. So you want to reflect and evaluate what you're doing throughout the process. You know, the journal is for that, but you can have informal meetings and talk about it and see where you are. Um, if, if you're running into roadblocks, what, what blocks? Well, how do you have to move um, around or through those roadblocks? You, you want to consider those kinds of things. And, um, and I recommend, again, writing them down so that you've got them at the end of this process. Um, and then you want to make sure you have quantitative and qualitative results. So as you're, you're thinking about numbers, like how many people on the team or how many sources or um, you know, how many collaborators did you have? Uh, how, how many times did you have reflection uh, meetings? Those are all kinds of numbers. It might also be something like if you were raising money, how much money did you raise? Or, you know, how many people did you reach? Or how many people came to your events? Those can be those numbers too. But, you know, think about it. Um, sometimes we just um, forget that the numbers are, are everywhere for us. And so you want some numbers and then you want qualitative research as well. Remember the Phi Theta Kappa's mission is really what drives honors in action. So you want to think about how your team grew as scholars and leaders um, and, you know, who serve their communities. You can write about that and, and be specific about it. And then of course you want to write and edit um, your honors in action hallmark award entry you know, you want to leave time to write and leave time to really seriously edit um, the really great honors in action project entries we get have been you know, very much edited. Uh, that's part of the process. We all have to go through editing when, when we're writing. And so um, please leave that. So that's that's the process, all of it. So I want to just highlight a couple of other things. Honors in action. Um, Christine, and I've mentioned both that there are seven themes to the art and science of play. You pick one of these themes and, and your research question will be based on it and your academic investigation will be based on it. One thing I want to point out, and these are in the honors program guide that the Alumni Association sent you, but pay attention to the overarching questions. Those are the questions that are in white on this slide. In the honors program guide, they're the question that's listed right after the theme title. I'm gonna particularly point out theme seven because there were a lot of problems with theme seven um, last year. Theme seven is play it forward. Notice that, but the way it was interpreted was that it says pay it forward. And that's not at all what the theme is about. Um, even though that's a more famous phrase. So you want to look at the question. It says, how can the experience of play serve as a catalyst for epiphanies, innovations, and inventions? And so that's what this particular theme is all about. And, and so pay attention to those questions for all of the seven themes so that you make sure that you're, you're looking at the overarching question and answering in, in some way. Your research question is going to be... Um, more narrow in focus than these questions are, but it helps you know if you're in the right theme. All right, so where do you start? Most chapters, most teams start with what we call inspiration sources. So newspaper articles or popular magazines, websites, TED Talks, you know, informal interviews or surveys, films, any of those things will work for thinking about, well, what do you want to study? These are not academic sources. So you don't want to use these um, when you get to the point where you're doing your academic research. They can help you get there. They can help you think about ideas. Um, newspaper articles will help you do the honors case study challenge. I'm just saying um, and a chance to win um, a lovely plaque in $500. Um, but these, these things really are, are starters. They're the inspiration for what you're going to do, the, the subject you're going to take. Um, 
So make sure if you look at these, um, if newspaper you reading newspaper articles, maybe the author of the article has a book, for example, that's well sourced, and you can use that. Or um, you can use. Uh, I'm going to mention some some databases, but a place like Google Scholar, if you see a topic um, from one of these sites and you think, well, maybe there are, you know, academics who have written about this, you can Google um, from Google Scholar and see where are the articles, where are the journal articles, where are the things that will work as academic sources. TED Talks, most people who give TED Talks or many people who give TED Talks have books. You know, you want to go to the more academic of sources. Um, and then you know, doing an, doing an interview, an academic interview or an academic survey takes a lot of work. There are definite guidelines for how they're done. So the thing is, if you want to interview a source, you, you need to get some help from someone who understands academic interviews. If you want to do a survey of your student body, you need to get some help from someone who understands the process of academic surveys. It doesn't mean someone asked me this question last week and I thought, well, that's a great question. I never thought about it before. They said, well, isn't it if you interview an academic, that's an academic interview? And the answer is no. Uh, an academic interview really refers to the process of working on the interview, developing open-ended questions, testing those questions, um, doing a, an hour-long interview, taping it, uh, going back through and transcribing it, coding it. It's a lot of work. So um, you may use an interview as an inspiration source. You probably don't want to use an interview as an academic source unless you have your you know, chapter advisors or people on campus who can help you do that in a, in a definite academic way. So then academic sources, these become really important. When you do your Honors in Action Hallmark Award entry, we ask for eight academic sources. Pick the eight that were most meaningful to your research, that, that taught you the most from about what you're studying, about the art and science of play. And you want them to be clearly academic publications or academic interviews with expert sources that were conducted in the past year by the chapter team. Um, you want them to be wide ranging. In other words, you want different points of view about your topic. They don't have to be absolutely opposed, but you want to think about you know, how people think about the the theme and the honor study topic from their different points of view and that you considered them. The other thing that's not here, it's in a different part of the rubric, is that you want to consider global viewpoints as well. You're probably going to work locally and, and that's what most chapters do and it's perfectly acceptable, but the rubric does ask you to consider your theme, your issue that you come up with from your academic research and how it plays out globally. So from the beginning, you might want to think about that when you're looking at sources. All right, so here are the qualities of an academic source. They are presented or published by an author with expertise, expertise or credentials. Um, you know, they're in peer-reviewed journals or books that have clearly been vetted and edited. Um, they have clear and accurate references. So you can use books, for example, that are written by journalists or people who aren't necessarily academics. But what you want to look at are, you know, how do they cite their sources? How do you know which sources they used? You know, most journalists will have a big list at the back of all the people they talked to or all they interviewed, all the things they look at. And those footnotes, either in an academic book or in a, you know, a book from a journalist that has been vetted and edited, those footnotes are great sources for you because you may find the perfect sources in those footnotes. So don't ignore them when you're looking at citations. It may help you find those eight sources, the very best eight sources to help you um, really work through the honors in action process. So you might look at um, published literature reviews or published research. It can be quantitative or qualitative. It can be archival. Um, there are lots of different types of academic investigation or research, and you can use any of those things. Perfectly acceptable with honors in action. Um, you can use a dissertation or a thesis. Um, books published through university presses are academic um, sources, typically. 
Um, and there are loads of journal articles, um, again, the, that you can find um, that, that are really helpful and, um, and they're shorter than books, I'm just saying. Um, so you can take a look at those. All right, so a little bit more about academic sources. If you're, if you're not real sure whether a source is academic, um, my, my first recommendation is yeah, ask your chapter advisors, ask that research librarian. There are people on campus who know whether things are academic sources. It doesn't have to be a mystery to you, but you can ask yourself these kinds of questions like, well, what is, what's the purpose of this source? You know, what, what's the thesis? What's this person uh, or people? trying to do with this source. Um, you can really ask about, you know, how current the source is. Technically, um, we use APA citations and technically APA sources have to be five or fewer years. That's a rule we break for honors in action. I think it's one of two rules we break for honors in action. You can use sources that are older than that. Um, when you, you get to graduate school, and hopefully many of you will, you will have to use sources that are five or fewer years typically, or classic sources, seminal sources in the field. There are always sources that, you know, they may be 30 or 40 or 50 years old, but everybody in the field cites them. Um, those are really, they can be really good to use and they're perfectly acceptable to use. You know, check to see, is there a detectable bias? You know, all of us have biases, you know, we all have points of view and, and the sources you're gonna look at do, but is there an effort by the author or authors to, I put it here, play fair, you know, to really consider the other side um, of these or other sides of the issue? You wanna look at if there's a really detectable bias and there's no attempt to, to look at the other sides, you don't want to use that source as one of your eight. It may end up being an inspiration source for you, but it's it's not the best one to pick for one of your eight academic sources. You know, how sound is the source and how wet, well written? You can tell if something is has citations, you know where the information's coming from, it's well written, you know, very likely written in an active voice. There aren't a lot of spelling mistakes, um, there aren't a lot of grammar or grammatical mistakes then you know that it's it's probably okay if it meets all the other criteria. You know, again, let me say it, I think for the fourth time, research librarians can help you with all of this. And, and so get those coaches, um, you know, as we're, we're starting a football season, um, those football players uh, from Notre Dame will get on the field. They're already great football players, um, but they get coached every single week. The coach doesn't say, um, free Marcus Freeman doesn't say, hey, we're going to play in Dublin next week. Let's get on a plane and I'll see you on Saturday. It just doesn't work that way. So think of yourselves you know, as the academic uh, scholars, the people who are like those really talented football players. Um, get, get coaches if you need them. That's how you learn to grow as scholars and leaders. And you can write about that in your Honors in Action Hallmark Board entry. So where to find academic sources? You know, again, you're going to have people who can help you with this, but your li college libraries databases. Um, there are lots of search engines you can use. WorldCat, if you're looking for global sources, this is a good one. Google Scholar. Um, Google Scholar does have global um, so, you know, sources there. Um, there are lots that, that are from um, American scholars, but you can find both at Google Scholar. Um, there are open access journal websites. Uh, Futurity is one that's you know, the cutting edge of research, things that are you know, kind of moving forward. So you can take a look there. You want to make sure um, when you use these, particularly if you use a database or you use um, one of the journal websites, a part of the APA uh, manual will say that you, you don't have to use URLs um, when you, you write your citations if you use a database, but you do have to use what's called the DOI. And I'm sure Sal's gonna talk to you about this, but it's really important in APA that whoever comes and reads your citation knows where to find that source. So any of these databases can help with that. So, you know, I know you are fierce like Serena Williams um, and academic stars. 
So you want to um, develop some research conclusions. And I want to just give you a few questions you can ask yourselves in how you develop those research questions, because it's a part of your Honors in Action Hallmark Award entry. And this is the part of the process where you fix those uh, research conclusions. And from those conclusions, you develop your action. So you know, what, what did you learn? There's an easy kind of question, you know, how did your investigation answer your research question? You had a research question, how did you answer it? You know, what were your varied sources and what did you learn from them? Um, it's, it's really important so you have that information so you can show that you use those varied sources. You know, what were the main points? You know, what were the thesis statements? How did the, the authors defend those thesis statements? That's gonna help you as you think about the issue and your theme and the honor study topic. You know, what was the significance? This is the so what. So this research was done, what was the outcome? Why did it matter? Why did it matter to your team um, in terms of being meaningful? can be an important part of research conclusions as well. And then, you know, what new ideas can you build off the topic you studied? This doesn't mean that you have to be building those ideas so that you can do further research. It could be that someone else will read your Honors in Action Hallmark Award entry and say, oh yeah, that's a great idea. You know, so maybe your team didn't get to that idea, but you can think about some of the ideas that you, you wanna work on. There are a lot of parts of the rubric, and I know that Christine, because she has served as an Honors in Action Hallmark Award entry judge, is going to talk a little bit about this and what she saw there. Um, but we have lots of sources for you. We have lots of resources online. We don't want this to be a mystery. We're really happy um, to provide these sources and to answer questions. I mentioned the planning rubric, which again, a clue is a planning and and judging rubric. Um, so again, you're planning with the end in mind. We have an honors in action workbook in PDF form. It's online at ptk.org backslash honors. You can download the workbook, print it, um, and you can work through the honors in action process using the workbook. Perfectly acceptable. The honors program council wanted everybody to have that. Um, so it's great. The journaling guide is both in the honors program guide and it's on uh, the website at ptk.org backslash honors. Um, and so you can just look, you don't have to reinvent your journal. Look at the types of questions you might ask and types of information you may want to keep that will help you as you're moving forward. We have a guide for developing a research question and an academic sources guide. Both of those are also in the honors program guide, but we have them separately online on the web if you're just looking for those pieces of the honors in action process. We have film resources. So most films are inspiration sources, not all of them. We, we have documentaries on there as well. And those may well be uh, academic uh, sources. You, you can just check to make sure that they fit the criteria. But you know, everybody loves films as inspiration sources. You can have a lot of fun with those um, and get a lot of ideas from them. So consider that. We have Civic Scholar, Phi Theta Kappa's Journal of Undergraduate Research. We have four years um, posted online. You can take a look at, well, what does an award-winning chapter's Honors in Action project look like? And we will have in the fall, later in the fall, we'll have the 2023 edition of Civic Scholar. Each of these um, has 18 different entries. And so you're going to see a whole bunch of award-winning Honors in Action projects. And you'll see that they're done in different ways but they all follow the process. So the process is really important. I mentioned the Honors Case Study Challenge. The 2023 Honors Case Study Challenge um, is due in November. I think it's November 8th. Um, that's online. So if you're really interested in taking those inspiration sources and writing up a case study to help you get started, this is a great way to do it. And you have a chance to be um, on stage in uh, at PTK Catalyst 2024 in Florida. Um, next April. Then we have Honors in Action Grants. So let me encourage you to apply for an Honors in Action Grant. They are due September 14th. So you still have three weeks to work on this. You can ask for up to $1,000 to help you do your Honors in Action project. There are some restrictions. For example, you can't purchase food with the money. That's a Mellon Foundation um, guideline and not ours, but we want to follow those. But we would like to see every single chapter in Nevada, California, get an Honors in Action grant. 
I am sure out there that you can use up to $1,000 to enhance your honors in action projects. So please apply um, the applications online. Again, September 14th is the deadline. And then we have Research Edge, get an edge.ptk.org. If you're still really thinking, I just would like to know more about the honors in action process and academic investigation process, um, Research Edge walks you through that process. And so I'm really happy uh, to share that with you as well. And you can purchase Bling when you finish Research Edge, which is always exciting. So we have lots of people at headquarters, Phi Theta Kappa headquarters at and who can help you with honors in action and answer your questions. That includes me, and I'm really happy to answer any questions you've got. If we have a few minutes, I'll do that here. Um, but I'm always happy to answer questions. My email address is susan.edwards at ptk.org. Um, so please ask them. Really, there are no bad honors in action questions. We're here to help because our purpose is to help you grow as scholars and leaders um, who serve your communities. And so ask those questions. Um, and thank you so much for working on Honors in Action. We so appreciate you because you're helping us fulfill our mission. And I can't wait to hear about your Honors in Action adventures this year. So I don't know, um, Faustina or Christina if, Christina, if we have time for questions or if we need to delay those till later. Um, whichever way works. And I'll check the chat as well in case there are some there. You can go ahead and uh, ask questions if you wish. Okay. Um, the one question that I saw posted was, uh, can we get a copy of this presentation? It definitely, um, you can get, I'll, I'll send Christina, the, I sent the PowerPoint slides and the images are, are too big uh, to send via email, but the PDF, of the slides is not. So yeah, we're happy to share that. We also have um, a longer Honors in Action webinar that is posted at ptk.org as well. So yes, you're welcome to have that. And where do we find the link to the grant? I will, you know, I will get that when, um, when we, we start, I, I don't know it off the top of my head. It is, it is with the, the ptk.org backslash honors page, but I'll make sure I have the exact one and I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. And I it's not a diff. Oh, I'm sorry. Side. I believe it's on the left-hand side when you get on the, on the yeah. page, there's like a whole column of things you can link to. Yes, it is. And I'll, I'll get the, I'll, thank you, Jerry. Woohoo! I appreciate that. Um, you, it's not a difficult application. You do have to have started the honors in action process. So I think you you need um, your your at least your tentative research question, what theme you've picked, and then you know three sources with APA citations and your annotations. We know things change, so it may be that you don't use those three sources that you use for the grant. You know as you move forward, but we do want you to have been thinking about your honors in action project. Um, you may use the funds for any part of the Honors in Action process. And we have online um, examples of how people have used them. You know, it could be honoraria. We've had chapters that have uh, rented equipment so they could film something. Um, we've had chapters uh, hire a, a webmaster or um, a marketing firm to help them market. Um, we've had people buy, you can't buy things, supplies like pen and paper and stuff like that, but you can buy supplies if you're, you're working on something and you're, you want giveaways um, and those kinds of things. And I should mention, you can buy a copy of the APA Manual 7th Edition with your grant funds. Um, if you, you don't have a copy uh, for your chapter or maybe your college library doesn't have a copy, it's really valuable because it's it's going to be the most accurate and updated information. So I've been recommending to people, put it in your grant, um, get the funds so that you can pay for it. That's a very long answer about where is it located. <laughs> Okay, I say, do other hallmark write-ups such as college project require eight sources as well? 
or does the amount required academic sources vary? Um, it's a great question. You don't, the purpose of the honors, uh, the college project is completely different from honors in action. So the sources are um, required for honors in action. The college project's really more about developing or honing um, a, a relationship with your college administration. So what's important there is really about working with the college administration and working together to do a project that really fulfills part of the mission of the college or part of the strategic plan. So the purposes are, are really different, although they do both help you uh, develop and hone leadership skills. Are there any other questions? Hey, I know I've taken up a lot of time. I'll put my uh, email address in the chat. So if you've got other questions, I'll, I'll be here um, today. But if you have questions after um, today, I'm happy to answer those. And again, thank you, um, Christine and Faustina and the Nevada, California um, Regional Alumni Association for putting this on and for inviting me to be part of it. Um, I'm just really happy to be with you today. Thank you so much, Susan. We really appreciate your time and your wonderful presentation. At this time, I would like to introduce Christine Lowe, our esteemed alumni award-winning Hall of Alumni Hall of Honor winner, who um, is the first in her family to get a master's degree. And she is uh, started Phi Theta Kappa through De Anza College. And I met her when she was just a rookie at the uh, regional convention in Reno and just loved her from the minute I saw her. So um, she's also a film producer and she's got uh, films under award-winning film under her belt. And she's in process of doing a feature length documentary and writing a book um, about um, collaborating on a book about women in the film industry. And um, she's streaming and she does creates videos. She's creating a video for alumni for Phi Theta Kappa and how to wear your pin and a lot of different things. So she's very, very, very busy. And we are so proud of her. Here is Christine Lowe. Well, thank you once again. And thank you, Faustina, for moderating both uh, Susan's and my presentation. So I will go ahead and share the screen. Let's see if I get the right presentation. I got it. All right, looking good. And what I'll do is see if I can reduce the window here. Okay, great. And finally, just you have so many uh, guides here and, and uh, just want to make sure that I could click on everything without anything else in the way. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of going blind here. I, I took out the bar to see all your wonderful faces. So, uh, so welcome uh, to my presentation. And this particular, this particular presentation is really special for me. This is something I have never really presented before. I have given presentations about uh, how to make your Hallmark Award entries competitive. But because of my experience of being uh, serving as a Hallmark Awards judge, not any Hallmark Awards, it's honor, uh, Hallmark Award entries for honors and action projects. Uh, I learned so much in just in my first year. And uh, I wanted to share with you uh, some of the tips that I gleaned from this experience and uh, will help you identify some of the patterns of you know, mistakes or learning lessons that I noticed from the honors and action uh, award entries that I reviewed. So uh, the goal is to make sure that your Hallmark Award entry looks ducky. So I'll go ahead and move to the next slide here. Now, in the spirit of the uh, Art and Science of Play, I was uh, thinking about my personal journey as a Phi Theta Cabin. Last year in my presentation, I spoke about 
uh, how to adjust as a member of Phi Theta Kappa. I'm a non-traditional student. I'm an older student. And as you can see of some of my fictional role models, you could see that um, I, this dates me a little bit. But now my personal journey continues as a Hallmarks Award judge. So again, in the theme of, in the spirit of the art and science of play, I wanted to highlight some of my quote unquote role models uh, since I grew up in the television era, uh, watching TV all the time. So of course, you know, Perry Mason, um, he was uh, always someone I, I really enjoyed watching his shows, especially as a teenager. I knew that I wasn't meant to be a lawyer, but I was so intrigued by Raymond Burr's acting and just uh, the integrity that he conveys uh, in his characterization of, of Perry Mason. Um, but the one that I really enjoyed the most was Judge Harry Stone from the television comedy show Night Court. That was uh, during my teenage years. And I just loved the fact that we had a very smart judge who was zany, but smart and a man of integrity. And for those who are probably in a younger generation, we remember uh, the wonderful antics of Kate McKinnon, uh, one of the stars of Saturday Night Live and had her portrayal of uh, the late uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And uh, it was so fun just to uh, <laughs> watch her antics, her quotes. And I really thought I got a big quick, I got a big kick out of her saying that she gets to sit down on a bench and get paid for judging people. Well, <laughs> I thought that's a great joke. Uh, I'm not as discerning and much more flexible and compassionate, but uh, I had wonderful guidance uh, from Susan Edwards and uh, many from headquarters in terms of how to be the best judge as I can be. So now that I've given you my uh, comic antics, I better build up my credibility here. So as Faustina mentioned, I got my start very much like you, especially if you are first uh, uh, members of Phi Theta Kappa for your first term and you're getting back into school, you know, there's a lot going on, trying to figure out your class schedules, trying to fit in in a college environment. And I very much had a, a, a similar start. Um, and the fact that I was an older student, I was uh, in my late 30s at the time, um, I was really nervous because there were um, some of my clothes were older than some of my classmates, and so I really wasn't sure whether I'd fit in. But entering the film program, I was really happy that um, I was accepted pretty quickly. And when I became a, when I first uh, entered my first chapter meeting with the Alpha Sigma Alpha chapter, they welcomed me with open arms. So it was, uh, it, it was a wonderful experience being a chapter member. I uh, was also ambitious and uh, noticing the vice president of operations job was something that I felt I could do. So I ran for that office and uh, got elected. And I also managed a peer mentor program for three years. And I'm so proud of it because it really helped a lot of students from the uh, Asian Pacific Islander parts of the world uh, who were students at De Anza College. And it was great to see them succeed and uh, the cool thing about that particular program is that it, we won our College Project Hallmark Award. So we actually won the award at the International Convention. Uh, and it was really cool to, to see this trophy uh, and all these things that we talk about winning a Hallmark Award to see that come to life. And then in my last year, I served as chapter president of our, chap of our Alpha Sigma Alpha chapter. I was also lucky enough to continue moving up the ranks, and I, I credit that to a number of wonderful mentors. Many of them are my advisors, and what's even cool is that many of them are my teammates in the Alumni Association. And so thanks to the encouragement of my mentors, uh, I ran and was elected to uh, service as a regional officer for your Nevada, California region. I first started off as your Northwest District Vice President, and then the next year I was lucky enough to be elected as your regional president. So it was a huge honor and it was really one of the most rewarding experiences of my Phi Theta Kappa journey. Uh, I took some time off and thanks to uh, a wonderful teammate, Sheila Burson and one of my role models, uh, she uh, asked if I would be interested in joining the Alumni Association. At the time, there was a vacancy in the president's position, and since I had presidential experience in both the chapter and region, I accepted it. 
So that's a, it all sounds wonderful and glorious, but it's a lot of hard work. And to add on to that, uh, the entire team and I had to deal with an, uh, this little thing called the pandemic. So it was a lot of work um, and we all got through it together and, uh, and we still remain a cohesive team. So during my Phi Theta Kappa journey, one of the things that I didn't realize I had a talent for was for uh, writing, uh, editing, and proofreading Hallmark Awards. And so for those who know me uh, or have known me for a while, uh, one of the, the really bad things I did was I was always afraid to share my writing. I lacked self-esteem and was too afraid to show my term papers or receive any kind of constructive feedback. Uh, so um, that hurt me in the short term. Um, and it was really difficult really getting good grades when I was a student at UC Berkeley. But all that changed when I became a city planner. And uh, for some reason, I started developing a knack of catching editing errors, uh, proofreading and helping improve a staff report to our uh, planning commissioners or our city council. And fortunately, that spilled on to uh, my role as a proofreader for our Alpha Sigma Alpha chapter. And one thing led to another, and I just developed my confidence in these Hallmark Award entries to the point that uh, I started writing award-winning, or at least the first draft of our award-winning uh, Hallmark Awards for the chapter, for the region, and now the Alumni Association. Now, I, I'm grateful for my talent, and I will, won't be shy in patting myself on the back, but a lot of it also is uh, working with a wonderful writing team. So, of course, with our Alumni Association, we wouldn't be an award-winning team without it exceptional proofreaders like our Vice President Faustina Washburn, our Treasurer uh, Barbara Demopoulos, and of course uh, Sheila Burson, who is our Director at Large and is uh, a graduate of, uh, has a Master's in English. So um, I attribute the success to them. And, uh, and that was one of the reasons that we also won Hallmark Awards is that I had really supportive people to review the writing make some minor improvements. And so I've really come a long way from being really shy and really afraid to show my writing to here it is and, uh, and uh, please uh, help improve the quality of our Hallmark Award entry. So since I am a Hallmark Award uh, entry judge, uh, one of the thing, one thing that I really want to state is that um, I do not read Hallmark Award entries for the Nevada, California region. Phi Theta Kappa is exceptional in terms of, um, I honestly don't know how you all do it, but it's great to receive these entries that come from completely different regions. Uh, and uh, they're really good and it's a, it's a well-oiled machine. And so I will not specify which regions or chapters I have reviewed. Um, but just to put some reassurance that I do not read anything from our region, but the experiences that I gleaned as a first time Hallmark Awards, uh, Honors in Action Hallmark Awards judge um, will hopefully strengthen uh, your Hallmark Award entries uh, later this year. So this is, uh, I'm gonna present to you the meat of my presentation, which are tips to keep you from tripping because you will run into many obstacles between now and December, everything from making sure that you are uh, reviewing the right uh, resources, that you're journaling. Um, and then of course you run into the, that time of year where you're challenged the most and that's uh, after Halloween where you're, uh, you're running into uh, time constraints due to midterms. And then if you're transferring to a four-year university, uh, you need to make time to submit your college entrance uh, applications and personal statements. Uh, and then, of course, the holidays. And so um, there's, a, there's a lot of hurdles along the way between now and the end of the year. And so these next tips will hopefully keep you from tripping up within your chapter's respective project. So in my email uh, last night, I had mentioned that if you... Uh, to recharge your phones because from for my presentation, if you see this cute little duck in your presentation, you wanna take a screenshot because this will come in handy 
during the gung ho workshop that you will that you will take part in after Saladada's presentation. So you see this cute little duck in, in future slides? Take the time to take a photo. So one of the things I wanna do is to introduce you to the Honors in Action Project Award rubric. And you uh, received this in your email last night. Uh, it's a, at, at first glance, and especially if you're new or you're a new officer taking on this responsibility as a HIA officer in your chapter, this seems like a burdensome uh, process. But one of the things that I want to emphasize, because I've done um, Honors in Action projects myself, is that the Honors in Action program or the project uh, is not meant to be easy. However, it is meant to be doable. And so that's why there are a lot of sources that Susan talked about in the previous presentation. And this is an additional guide to help you write a successful Honors in Action entry. I also want to include some tips uh, in this presentation. <clears throat> so the first tip is to familiarize yourself with the rubric. It is a nine page document and there's two parts to it. One is the eight uh, question portion of the rubric. And then the next part is uh, all, the, all the guidelines and the point breakdown of the judging criteria. So when I judge a Hallmark Awards entry, I follow that section and, um, and that's great because we don't have any abilities to play God or be compassionate. You know, this is a, a great way to remain uh, objective about what we judge. And uh, as it was mentioned in the previous presentation, the Hallmark Awards project consists of three major components, the academic research and analysis. And then based on that, to prevent you from what we call um, preventing you from the cart going before the horse, you need to do the research first so that you can decide on a service or action project. And then finally, the third break, uh, the third component is the impact. And it is easy for us to uh, focus on our own needs, uh, trying to make the grades, trying to get that scholarship, which is one of the main reasons we joined Phi Theta Kappa, myself included, but also uh, trying to get into the college of your first choice. And, and it's sometimes a little easy to lose, um, to lose the fact that you are interconnected with your community, with your school, with the world. And I know that sounds a, a little healy-feely, but uh, what makes really great honors and action projects special is that the project becomes much bigger than you. So the impact portion of your um, honors and action uh, award entry is something that you really cannot blow off. You, this is something that um, you realize will make a difference um, in your life and in the way that you uh, work uh, in this project as a Phi Theta Kappa member. So as you see here, I will uh, circle question number one. Now, I will not go through every question, but I did want to uh, include this section of the abstract and the summary, which is question number one, because in your abstract, you, wanna, um, you want to write as succinctly as possible about everything about your project. And like any good honors and action entry or any good Hallmark Award entry, you're essentially telling a story. That's what keeps readers and judges like myself interested because in your abstract, it includes a little bit of everything, things that we can look forward to reading about, the research, the action, and the impacts on, on this, on you and your chapter and on this project. And one of the things that uh, is specified is that you wanna keep this succinct and less than 300 words or at least a 300 word text. I go ahead and drink some water. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm going to pause for a second here. <clears throat> one moment. 
So as you'll see in the first two pages of your presentation, that <clears throat> you have to answer eight questions, which, okay, you know, eight questions, okay. But you, wait, there's more because the judging criteria <clears throat> will be based on the next seven pages. So you want to take the time to review the rubric <clears throat> as carefully as possible and get a team to work with you on that. <clears throat> Whether you are part of a powerhouse chapter or you are the only member of your chapter, I'm sorry, hang on one more moment. I got So it's important whether you are part of a small team or a larger component of your chapter, you want to co collaborate with your team to help you through this very important project because there's a lot involved. Um, I call it a finessing. You have to finesse your way through this process. Like I said, it's doable, but it does require a, a, for you to work with your team and work really closely with your advisor, um, <clears throat> with the, the community or those you will be collaborating with and journaling. <clears throat> Sorry, so sorry. <clears throat> so as my second tip, you wanna take the time to review the judging criteria. Review the questions from the first two pages. And what worked for me when I was judging, of course, just, you know, like I said, it's, it's a finesse uh, type project. It's the same thing with judging and I'm you know, always reviewing very carefully the questions and the rubric. And what I wanna show you in an example where you look at the first two pages and then try to match it based on the criteria and the way and the rubric has designed it to help you do that. So I'm not gonna go through every question as I mentioned before, but I am gonna pick one in particular. <clears throat> so the first example will be for uh, question number four, and that's to describe your academic research into your honor study topic, your research questions and analysis for your research findings and research conclusions. So one of the key words that you'll find when you go through the second portion of your rubric is the key words academic research, as well as research conclusions. And I will go ahead and switch on to the rubric or the uh, judging criteria section where you see academic research, there it is right there. And it's also important to take a look at the, break, at the point breakdown. Now, one of the tips that we've always given no secret about it is that you want to shoot always for the highest point possible. Uh, and, uh, and so again, there's a lot of uh, careful work that needs to be done to reach that. And, uh, and it clearly states what these point breakdowns includes. And so you always wanna shoot for the, the top uh, point total if possible. And again, when you flip through the rubric, you see the term research conclusion from question number four, and boom, there it is. And so again, it's, uh, there's a lot of information that will help you, and that's one of the reasons why Headquarters provides so many resources to help uh, with not only the work for, to answer question number four, but all the remaining seven questions. So my third tip is the one factor that you have the most control over, and that is spelling and grammar. Uh, this is the part where unfortunately uh, points do get docked. And uh, this is something that can be uh, easily uh, managed. Now, uh, ironically, even though I pride myself with proofreading and editing Hallmark Award entries, Thanks to my teammate, Sheila Burson, who gave a presentation about judging Hallmark Awards or uh, judging Hallmark Awards in a judge's perspective. Uh, she introduced me to Grammarly.com. And now I think back and thinking, where have you been all my life? And so 
Um, this has been really helpful and that has uh, definitely prevented me from future embarrassment on what I write. But one of the things that I'll emphasize is that um, span grammar and spelling are the most, one of the most important factors. And even though it might not count as a lot of points, if there is a spelling error or a grammatical error, it pulls the judge away from reviewing your award entry and you're just focusing on that one little mistake. Uh, but it is important to make sure that you that your entry is as accurate as possible. So there's like a little duck here, so don't forget to take a picture of this screen. And um, while you're doing that, I also want to emphasize, or actually Susan also wanted to emphasize that another key component is just good writing. So you want to make sure that uh, someone uh, uh, does their draft to the best of their ability, like they're going to turn it in, and then work with a writing team uh, to help uh, clean up some of those little errors. And, uh, and then if you are working with uh, a number of people, you really want one person to, so that uh, that one person could review your final draft and it has that one voice rather than uh, a voice of other teammates. You wanna make it as cohesive as possible. So oh, there's another deck here. Uh, let me go ahead and move this bar upward. And uh, your entry again will be judged for spelling and grammar at every component of the chapter's HIA project. So when you go through the um, when you go through the judging criteria, there's going to be that um, point total for spelling and grammar in the research, in the action, and the impact sections of the judging criteria. <clears throat> and uh, Susan did mention this, and I say the same thing. You gotta show me, show me the numbers. Uh, the big the one pattern that I noticed with many of the Hallmark Award entries that I reviewed is that there was not a lot of uh, quantitative results, uh, in particular in the research aspect of it. Uh, and uh, fortunately with the rubric, um, the judging criteria, it does clearly state where you can include those uh, quantifiable numbers. But I know with, a, with several projects, and I, I can base this from experience as well, where you could uh, really talk a lot about the, uh, um, the quality of the project, how it made a difference, why this was a, a good project, but without the numbers, it's hard to give that credibility. So again, you wanna show, show me or show the judge the numbers. So again, in addition to the qualitative outcomes, uh, you need to show the quantitative results from your research component of this project, as well as the action component. So, you know, if uh, the example I give is that if four out of five dentists prefer a particular toothpaste, you need to do an, an action project that either is equivalent to it, or, you know, perhaps you get another uh, quanti quantitative result. Okay, and then uh, one of my one of my last tips is just some final words on impact of the impact section of it, and without really uh, sugarcoating this too much, you know we are um, interconnected with so many other facets of our life, you know beyond family and community, and trying to get into the school of your choice. You know we are inter we are interconnected with our community with our country, with the world and beyond. And so these projects are meant to be thought provoking and give you, um, give you an opportunity to think about um, how this impacts you um, personally and hopefully professionally and, and years afterward. And the reason I say that is based on an experience on my own Honors in Action project a few years back in which it was focusing on the homeless. Uh, this was a Dressed for Success Honors in Action project that our chapter conducted. And um, it, was, uh, it was startling to realize just how many homeless mothers uh, there were in our community. And the Dress for Success uh, event was really helpful and helpful to them. Uh, and the 
the factor of, of homelessness is something that has remained with me to the point that I am now directing a documentary about a former homeless person. Um, and there's other events that will be coming up uh, that I'll talk about uh, in the future uh, about a possible activity to help the homeless. And so um, it's the one theme that has really resonated with me. And because of that, I realized that um, I, there is so much more that's bigger than me. And uh, it's uh, great to realize that thanks to this project, it has enabled me to just think beyond what I see in the mirror or getting into getting that next job or getting that next something. Uh, and then finally, you wanna just continue journaling as much as you can. Make sure that you title it, date it, how this helps you with this project, or just something to kind of have in the, the mental back pocket because you want to continue staying ahead of not only the crowd, meaning perhaps other chapters, but also just staying ahead of your own time management. You're going to have many more responsibilities, even though it seems a little easier because this is the beginning of your fall terms. Um, it will start, you'll start running into time conflicts and not remembering everything. So just write everything down and uh, make sure that you uh, are dating everything because once it comes down to writing those Hallmark Award entries, uh, you're going to rely on those journals to help jog your memory. So in addition to the uh, previous two Honors in Action boot camps, uh, and of course, this one that will that is being recorded and will also uh, appear uh, as a YouTube link in the near future. Uh, I also want to introduce you to some uh, amazing workshops that have been presented by your alumni association. Uh, the first one is judging Hallmark Award entries based on a judge's perspective, and I talked about this earlier. And this was a presentation given by Sheila Burson and another alumna. And uh, I learned so much from them, and uh, it was a, a great presentation, and so I will share that link for you, although you will see it at the bottom of this page where it's uh, uh, ptkalumni.org slash workshops. And then the uh, presentation that started it all uh, is the Hallmark Awards for Special Individuals Writing Workshops, and that was the event that kicked off the T at 3 event and led to Honors in Action Boot Camp where I had a chance to share a little bit of my, um, my enjoyment in writing and presenting Hallmark Awards. So there's some wonderful tips in there for both presentations, and that is uh, on the workshop section of our alumni webpage. So as you will experience the, from Susan's presentation and my presentation that this seems uh, a lot to take on. It's a bit of information overload, um, and I don't disagree. There's a lot of information that we're sharing with you, but deep down, you can do it. Um, this involves uh, some teamwork, uh, time, and uh, you'll find this once you find the project that you're going to work on, that passion will completely kick in. So one of the exciting things about having honors in action later in the year is that I know that there are some chapters that are um, kind of on the fence on whether they want to proceed with the project or maybe wait till next year. You have time to begin your honors in action project. Um, our alumni association is here to um, you know, provide feedback uh, either at the end of this event or after this presentation. But um, even with the short amount of time, our chapter was able to uh, conduct a successful project. And, um, and uh, it's a, whether or not the awards are there, it's only icing on the cake. But the fact that you have been able to complete a project will, and the skills that you glean from it, the soft skills like uh, the communication and teamwork and writing, uh, this will put you a cut above the rest of your peers. So how did I do <laughs> in terms of my first year judging? Um, out of the 19 award entries that I reviewed, I felt that I was objective as possible. Uh, I made the effort to review each entry three times. Uh, it's a lot of work because this is one of the most difficult uh, award entries to judge. And so I wanted to pay my 
careful due diligence and do the best I can. Well, one of the exciting parts was that, um, well, I wasn't sure whether I was actually doing things right, but I must have because uh, three chapters won homework awards. And I remember circling on one of them that this will win. Um, I didn't know whether it would, but sure enough, as I did my research on, on uh, who won homework awards at Catalyst, it was really exciting to see um, that a project that I reviewed did actually win a homework award and that I was right that it did win. So I look forward to judging future projects in, in uh, the upcoming years. So once again, uh, take time to get to know us. Uh, you can uh, email me. And at the Fall Leadership Conference on the 20th and the 21st of October, please visit us at the alumni table. Uh, we have such a great time getting to know you. And of course, Honors in Action Boot Camp, T at Three, The White Rose, and the number of events that our Alumni Association hosts. It has really enabled us to really connect with so many of you and to hear your success stories and your struggles. And, and uh, we've got lots of treats in store for you uh, at the alumni table. So um, please see us and, and uh, also take a treat or two. So again, this is my time to do a little plug in joining the Alumni Association, and you'll see the QR code that will link you to the application process. Uh, there are many opportunities to give back. For me, uh, it's through the T3 events and, and especially the Honors in Action Boot Camp. This event is particularly special for me because this was a, uh, an event that I uh, attended back many years ago when I was a regional officer from uh, the Colorado or, and attended the Colorado Regions event. And um, I brought that home. And even though I didn't reinvent the wheel, thanks to Susan and those at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters, we uh, improved upon the wheel and made it so much stronger for uh, to help you. Uh, joining the Alumni Association also enables us to support uh, Phi Theta Kappans after graduation or on their way to graduating or transferring to a four-year university or entering the workforce. And of course, the big draw of joining the Alumni Association is to have fun because we love giving back and helping out others. So my information is below, uh, christine.lo.ptk at gmail.com. Again, it has been a pleasure and a real privilege to help you uh, hopefully strengthen your chances to submit a strong Hallmark Award entry. And I wish you all the best in your, uh, in your journey as a Phi Theta Kappa and as a uh, Honors in Action participant. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen and uh, I'm available to answer any questions you may have or that's on the chat. Faustina. Uh, you're on mute. You're on mute. I don't see any questions in the chat at this time, so I guess people can ask questions. Good, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think with uh, with judging, you know, I definitely wanted to put a lot of care into it. And it's just uh, something I do because I know how difficult it is. And so, you know, all of us, uh, you know, judges, either we're alumni or um, or we work with headquarters, um, we put a lot of care into this. And it's just things that we we don't blow it off because we know how much hard work it took into submitting this award entry. So if it reassures you, uh, you know, we put a lot of care into judging and because we know how much work it takes to complete your honors in action project. Great. Do you see Jay down there today? He's not so when we do, um, when we yeah. do our project, we yeah. do, we do it with okay. other people so, from uh, our school uh, oh, or, yeah, yeah, um, I, cause I, I don't, I'm not sure if like, um, there's, I mean, I don't see anybody else from my school that is um, present. Um, so, like, how do you, how do you, like, how do you start it if, like, you're the only one? Like, you. Yeah, actually, actually, Susan, if you don't mind answering that question, I think you'd be a better authority on that than I would. Uh, no problem. Um, you know, you can start with one person. There's no question about that. So you can can start the process looking at the honors program guide. 
um, looking at the rubric and just sort of familiarizing yourself with, with the foundation of honors in action. And then, you know, seek a person on campus who maybe is part of Phi Theta Kappa, just that one person who you might want to work with and, and say, hey, let me talk to you about what honors in action is. Would you mind helping? And it's really helpful if you say, for example, would you mind reading this journal article, being very specific about one thing that someone can do for you, um, rather than saying, hey, will you just help with the project? And, and sort of talk to people and communicate and, and get them um, involved with you. But you, you can start the process now um, and you can look at the guide. Um, you may, if, if you are going to be uh, a team of one for a while, you may go ahead and, and select your theme um, and start to develop a research question. You, you can work through this process and invite people. So you do want to work with at least one other person who's part of Phi Theta Kappa. But remember, you also wanna work with collaborators who uh, are people on campus and from the community. So you can invite collaborators to work with you as well and help you with the project. And in fact, um, we want you to do that because that's a way to really hone your skills if you do that. So you know, maybe your first collaborator on campus would be the research librarian or um, maybe a faculty member who has been really helpful and, and you've learned a lot from who can help you really consider the project. So yes, don't be afraid to start if you are here by yourself, if, if you really are the person who is very active in your chapter, then you know get someone to come work with you. And if, if you can't go beyond those two people, that's okay, two people is a team. Awesome, thank you. Great, I, um, so Faustina, I did see one question regarding uh, what, why I chose uh, this particular honors and or Hallmark Award uh, uh, factor to judge uh, or award category to judge. And uh, um, my strength has always been with individuals and teams. And it was a great way to challenge myself. Again, Honors in Action Bootcamp is near and dear to me because this was such a great uh, idea from another region. And uh, why not enhance those skills uh, by being a judge for Honors in Action Project? And because of that, this led to this specialized event to where we have a breakdown of the rubric, uh, what are the helpful hints to keep you from tripping up uh, or, or uh, missing some uh, items in your entry, um, but also, it, and then of course, uh, uh, how to properly cite sources. So because of that experience and making the decision to challenge myself to review one of the harder categories, which is honors and action project, it really improves the quality of this year's boot camp. So that's why I picked it. I don't, I don't believe there are any more questions, Fasina, am I right? I, um, I don't see any. Okay, so um, I will be uh, giving uh, the introduction to our next speaker, which is Saladada, but I just wanna make sure that I have everything uh, transitioned correctly. So um, if you need to just get a glass of water, we're gonna have a two minute break and then we'll come back. And I just wanna make sure that I've got all the videos lined up for uh, Sal's presentation. So don't go away. All right, great. I hope you all had a, a nice time to take a break, to take a little stretch. And uh, just, uh, it, it, it's tough with sitting for a while and getting all this information. So um, we have something really special to share with you. And I'm so excited to hear Sal's presentation. So I would like to uh, share a little bit about Sal. So Sal Adada has worked in libraries for 54 years. He's been working full-time and, uh, and part-time as a librarian for the last 48 years at public libraries in uh, Palencia, Fullerton, Anaheim, uh, at Fairmont Prep, which is a private high school in Anaheim, and where I met him at Santa College. He's also been a librarian for Cerritos College and Santiago Canyon College. 
So in terms of his academic achievements, he attended North Carolina State College. He uh, earned an associate's degree in applied science uh, in applied science from Queensboro College, Community College, a bachelor's of technology degree from the City College of New York, and he holds a master's degree in library science from Queens College, all at the city of all at the City University of New York. He's also taught algebra in high school, which you know I understand why you, you uh, take care of the accounting and write out the checks. <laughs> You're very strong at mathematics. Uh, library sciences at San Jose State University, um, the CSUF satellite, and library technology and bibliographic instruction workshops at Santa Ana College. Uh, I know it specifies here as his introduction that he has been an advisor for the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, the Alpha Beta chapter, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention the oldest chapter, <laughs> um, and uh, served as the faculty scholar for the Phi Theta Kappa Honors Institutes in 2018 and 2019, which was um, really special. The most important part about Sal is that um, he is uh, our alumni advisor, and he has been not only a long time uh, a mentor, but more importantly, he's been a lifelong friend. So Sal, it's a real treasure to introduce you. So take it away. Oh my goodness, thank you. I hope I measure up to that, that bios. Most of that is actually factual, most of it. I'm into creative writing. So thank you, Susan, for your wonderful presentation. I don't know how you do it every single time. You're just absolutely wonderful. And Christine, thank you for the support with the videos because I have never done this presentation before. And I'm kind of excited to see how it works out myself. So, and it shouldn't take more than about 15 minutes or so, not counting questions and answers. So basically, good morning, I'm Sal Adada. I am a librarian at Santa Ana College. I have, uh, I, you'll like this part. I've never used APA myself. So don't worry about learning all that stuff. I used MLA, I used Turabian, because Susan may be the only one in the group who knows what that one is, and the Chicago Manual style, that's it. But if you know how to create a basic citation in any of the formats, you're already ahead of the game, okay? So one of my colleagues, Sheila Burson, months ago when we talked about this workshop, and she and I know each other very well, we have weird senses of humor and we kibitz each other. She said to me, they're gonna do citations. You are a librarian. You should do that. So who am I to question Sheila? Anyway, so I did some research. I actually did research, believe it or not. I came up with six resources, which I believe are going to help you. The first one, let's, uh, let's oh, wait. I'm, I'm going to go ahead There's... and share the screen, okay, Sal? Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> To have yes. helpers everywhere, folks. That's all you need is one helper to start with, and they attract others. Okay, so the first one, it was created by my colleagues at Santa Ana College, my librarian colleagues. And let me, uh, let's see, let me open that one. Oh, wait, I have to share screen first. Let me open oh, it. Oh, you wanna share the screen? Uh, yes, I would like to. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop sharing and then the you should be able to share your screen. Okay. I'm, I'm new at this also. So I'll open up the source and then I will share my screen if it lets me. Okay. Okay, can you all see that? Can anyone see it? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is a general introduction from my college's library on various formats. Of course, we want APA. So if we go over on the left-hand side, click on how to cite sources, go down to APA. It opens up with a general overview, very general of APA. And keep in mind, uh, Purdue University Online Writing Lab, which the acronym is OWL, even I figured that one out. That's a very, very good source. You'll find it everywhere. If you do any kind of a web search or on YouTube, you will find many, many good presentations there. And just as a general introduction to my college's suggestions, my college's library suggestions, there are all kinds of sources, all kinds that you'll be able to cite. <clears throat> the most I ever saw anywhere were about 50 different sources, some of which I've never even knew existed. Okay. Then next, I'll stop sharing. Oh, please forgive me. Did we lose Sal? Are you here? Sal? It looks like he dropped out. <laughs> he, um, he unfortunately dropped out. I do not see him in the list of participants right now. Hang on a second. Let me call him. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for your graciousness, Susan, Faustina, Barbara, Sheila, and everybody else who took time out of their valuable day to spend it with us. So back to, let's see, back to sharing screen. And by the way, I'm like the before and after example, okay? You can do this. My chapter, my dear, wonderful chapter, my, my vice president's here today. She's part of the HIA team. She's all new. She has only 24 hours a day and she has all kinds of obligations, more than many of you. And she takes the bus to school, okay? Just factor all of that in. And she volunteered for this. So we can do this. My chapter is a small, uh, concentrated core of working members, officers, and non-members. We need non-members who show up every week, the basis upon which we build everything else. So you can do this. We did it. It's a miracle. I don't know how we did it besides they did it. They worked really hard, 10 times, seven times in the last 10 years, for somehow our chapter won a regional HIA award, okay? It's a miracle. So if we can do it, you can do it. We're like the little engine that could. You probably don't know that little children's story, unless you're a children's librarian. We're the little chapter that could, and we did. And I say we, it's really them, okay? I just kind of include myself in that. I'm just along for the ride. Okay, so uh, let me go back to sharing my screen if I possibly can figure out how to do that. And um, Sal, if you want me to share the screen on your behalf, I could do it. Uh, is, will you be able to open it and show it? Or should I, I should just be able, do it? It's based on that handout, correct? Yes. Okay, why don't I go ahead and share the screen? Okay. I'll go ahead and do it. Okay, so I'm sharing the screen and, okay. So you see this, are you able yes, to- Yes, I do. Okay, so the phrase citing sources. Well, what's a source? A source is 
anything that you run across that you think is going to help you complete your project or even just to even start it. How do you know now what is going to be? You don't know. Like Christine was saying, write everything down. Everyone in the group should take their own notes. You don't know what you see. You don't know what they see. Okay. So the um, it's actually two links. The first one, the heading link is the more general one to Santana College Library handout. And the specific one for APA is the second link right here. It's a very good starting point to learn about the why, the when, the how to cite sources. It includes a link to a short video, which uh, in just a moment, Christine is gonna run for us. It's a minute and 54 seconds. It's, it's the best general overall introduction to citations in general. Um, since this particular handout was generated by my college's librarian, librarians, if you need individual help, please consult your own library. Also, don't forget your writing lab at school. They will directly help you with any part of it, including generating citations. So, uh, Christine, if you now could run the minute and 54 second video. Sure. Which is sure. on YouTube. Thank you. When it comes to citing sources, details matter. Introducing Grammarly's citations features. Instant, That's an ad, and folks. and seamless. At some point in your career as a student, you've probably had a teacher tell you to cite your sources while writing a research paper. But what is a citation, and why do we do it? Citation is the practice of identifying the sources you have quoted, paraphrased, or otherwise used in your writing, and is pretty standard practice in academic writing. Citations serve several purposes. For one, it allows your reader to follow up on and to verify claims that you make in your writing, and it gives you the opportunity to acknowledge the people whose ideas you have used to advance your argument. Essentially, you are recognizing that your research and scholarship builds upon the work and the ideas of many others who came before you. The result is that citation helps readers see the connections between books and articles published by many different authors, as well as how they connect to your own ideas. There are many different styles of citation established by various academic and professional organizations. The most common styles, however, are MLA, APA, Chicago, and CSE. Most styles involve a two-part process. First, you acknowledge a source with a brief notation after you use it in the body of your paper. Then, you provide more detailed information about the source at the end of your paper in the Works Cited list or bibliography. This more detailed entry will include essential publication information about the source, including the title of the work, the author, and the date of publication, so that your readers can find it. Each citation style has a published guide outlining all the details of how to use it, and there are also many online tools to help. If you have any questions about citation as a practice or about a particular citation style, ask a librarian for help. Thank you, Christine. I understand we had um, audio but no video, but that's okay. You guys can check that out yourself. And one more aid, Christine. Okay. The, the other good. video, if you could show that, if it's possible to have the video part of the video would be more instructive. If not, then then we can skip that part. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and... And okay. this one is specific to the seventh edition of APA, which is the one we're using. It's three minutes and two seconds. It's a good basic overview. <laughs> Okay, um, so Sal, cue me if you're not hearing this, and then what we can do is we could um, um, attach the link and uh, okay. play it uh, perhaps later. So let's give this a try. Yeah, I saw that, Bill. Thank you. 
Okay, so this one here, right? Yes. Okay, so you need to tell me whether it's uh, audible or not. Okay, so okay. here we go. This short video is meant to give students who are brand new to APA format some context and basic overview information about using APA format for college papers. APA stands for the American Cycle. I don't, I don't see the uh, visual. Does anybody see it? No? Okay. Yeah, we might need to. Um... Christine, stop, Christine, stop sharing. Christine, stop sharing your screen and then reshare it with the video. Okay. Good idea. Okay, let me let me try this again. Okay, then what I'll do is Stop sharing, reshare, and where are you? Ah, I think this is it. Okay, share sound. Okay, cross your fingers, and Miriam or Sal, let me know if it, it, it's working. I think this will work. Here we go. That's it. This short video is meant to give students who are brand new to APA format some context and basic overview information about using APA format for college papers. APA stands for the American Psychological Association, and APA format is the formatting style that many academic majors use to format their papers and cite sources within their papers. There are three basic parts of APA that you should understand. There is the basic format of how you set up your paper for things like your cover page, margins, line spacing, etc. There is in-text citing, where you use citations within your paper to let your readers know where your source material comes from. Finally, there is the references list, where you list all of the publication information for any sources used within your paper. We'll start with the overall formatting. In the seventh edition of APA format, you should have a cover page that includes your title, your name, the name of your program in school, the name of your class, the name of your professor, and the date. You should also have the page number at the top right corner. Your page numbers should appear on every page. You should begin your essay on the next page. Your margin should be one inch all the way around. You should use a clean standard font and you should double space your lines and single space after all punctuation. Be sure to indent by hitting tab for all new paragraphs. Next, we will explore in-text citing. It is important to remember that you must cite your sources within your text when you quote, summarize, and paraphrase information from your sources. This means you must cite even information you put into your own words. In APA, there are two basic structures for in-text citations, the narrative citation and the parenthetical citation. The narrative citation is used when you mention the author or author's last names within the sentence. In this kind of citation, the year citation is placed after the author or author's last names and any page or paragraph citations come at the end. The parenthetical citation is used when you haven't mentioned the author or author's names within the sentence. This citation includes the author or author's last names, year, and page number if necessary for a direct quote. Finally, we will take a look at a references page. The references page is where you will provide full publication and retrieval information for your sources. The references page is presented in alphabetical order, and it is important to remember that your in-text citations must match up with your references. APA provides guidelines for formatting each reference based on source type. Be sure to refer to the references section in the Excelsior OWL for more information about how to format your references. Yay, we did it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, you notice uh, that was from OWL or Purdue University. Keep that in mind. I suggest you become familiar with that source if you not have not already done so. Okay, 
Now, am I back in control of my screen? Uh, you want to go back to the yes. handout here? From okay. here on, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you so much. For your okay, help. so well, I'm. Uh, it's on now on screen. Uh, okay. Again, the, this this next one is also from Purdue. It's an eight page print source. It has specific guidelines with examples, including a link to their APA vidcast series of nine videos, each shorter than 10 minutes. No more videos today though. It also includes a citation machine, which can be found separately at www.citationmachine.net. And that is going to be our next example. So if I could uh, have control of the screen back, Christine, at this point. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. And let me open that one. And I'll share my screen. Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, host has disabled. Could I have screen sharing ability back, please? Okay, I, uh, is it possible to allow me to share my screen? Okay, thank you. Okay, if you go to that the source that I mentioned, citationmachine.net, you will end up here. And if you look closely, they mentioned three different types of sources, but if you click on more, you'll get a list of about three or four dozen more kinds of sources some of which had never entered my field of understanding ever. So there's probably every kind of source you could possibly want. If you wanna get help creating your source using a citation machine, this is a good one in my opinion. And there's a good guide, there's a good text below for APA citations and format in general. And I want to point out, let's see, a couple of things. Down below, it talks about maybe one dozen of those four dozen other kinds of sources. It gets into some of the things that the video we just saw touched on, but in more detail. And, okay, I have to search. Because annotated bibliographies, it's it's it, it may sound obvious, but some people don't think about it. When you have your list of sources, besides the format of the source, which is essential, you should annotate it. And if I may read briefly, an APA annotated bibliography or works cited or reference list, those name those those descriptors change. That includes a small note for each reference, each note, and I'm, this is from APA 7th edition. Each note should be short, one or two paragraphs, and contain a summary of your evaluation about each source. When creating your citations on citationmachine.net, there's a field at the bottom of each form to add your own annotations, which is great because it'll force you Right then and there to create your annotation so you don't have to find your source later and then do it then. Okay. I wanted to point that out. And okay, stop sharing. So, so now back to the guide. Let me read my, my annotation. This uh, 
the APA citation generator, besides the actual generating portion, it's a 25 page source. It's a detailed quote, comprehensive guide to APA citations and format, unquote. <clears throat> So after you use the one from my school, which is a good introduction, this one, it gets into a lot of detail covered in that short three minute video in a lot more detail. You can cite just the most common ones probably are websites, books, journal articles, YouTube, images, movies, interviews, newspapers, magazines, and PDFs. And also the APA annotated bibliography, and there's a link to their 10 page guide. And then, last, my last source, but not the least source, of course, Dr. Edwards alluded to this one. I believe this is the one to which you alluded. If not, that's my fault. Anyway. Available at ptk.org, also on YouTube, but I don't have that particular uh, URL. That was titled uh, the Research Edge Academic Resources Explained. And this is where I gave my commercial for doing the Research Edge. I'm assuming most of you are here because you know something about research, you want to do HIA. Have any of you done the Research Edge course? Bless all of you. This, this is where you should start, in my opinion. Before you do any research, take the Research Edge course. Why? Because Dr. Edwards is the creator of the content for that course and the HIA program on top of all that. So she's what I respectfully call the godmother of research at headquarters. And is this not the core value that we have in PTK? Yes, it is. So do that. Advisors, by the way, are now allowed to do these courses also. There's five now. I heard a rumor there are going to be two more, right, Susan, by the end of the year, maybe? I've done them. Yeah, so they're going to be two more. Thank you. I, I've done them because I want to know what my students are exposed to from PTK. So I will have an answer rather than having to contact headquarters. And they're very helpful at headquarters. But I like to be a resource. That's one of my roles. So anyway, do the research. If you learn anything from this today, take the Research Edge course. When you get the link to this video, then uh, do that because you will have a skeleton upon which to add all this other great stuff that hopefully you've learned today or maybe you'll learn it another time. So anyway, back to the source, the Research Edge, Academic Resources Explained. That's the title. It's a 58-minute video presentation which outlines, I'm quoting from Blake Ellis, I believe, um, outlines the Research Edge Professional Development course, specifically how to find resources, how to analyze them, and how to use them for your Honors in Action project. The presenters were members of the Honors Program Council in 2020, Dr. Rosie Banks from the Chicago area, Dr. Patty Hall from uh, Kenyatta College here in California, Professor, now Dr. Raul Kine from Minnesota. He's a biologist. Professor Laura Raymer, also from uh, Illinois area. And of course, our beloved Dr. Susan Edwards. And that concludes my feeble attempt at a presentation. Thank you all. If you have any questions now, uh, I will be happy to attempt to answer them. Well, you did great, Sal. And thank you so much for presenting this. Uh, as I mentioned in, in my presentation, uh, the citations is an important component of your Honors in Action uh, project entry. Uh, but I will say, based on experience, there were a couple of projects, less than a handful, in which 
They were well-written presentations, very few grammatical or spelling errors. It was a strong, compelling story, but they cited all their sources on MLA. And so um, that, that's, it's so tough to grade it down because it wasn't the correct sources. And you have to be honest with that. It's, it's clearly states that it's uh, APA. So uh, just skimming through here, hopefully I haven't missed anybody. I've got some good jokes here. Let me see if I've got any questions related to yours. I see one there from Isaac. Maybe Susan, you could address that one. Yeah, hi Isaac. Um, Research Edge really is can be used by anybody, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Um, it's I would say that it's probably closer to the beginner and intermediate parts because it's really trying to get people started with honors in action and on the research skills they need for classes. Um, so the courses are free to take and there, we certainly can provide other resources for you. If you, you take research edge and you think I want to do more, I want to know more about it. Um, we can, can help with that. Okay. All right. Good question. Okay. So we are running a little behind with the, uh, gung ho workshop. And so um, what we'll do, everybody received an email uh, that has the, um, the workshop uh, checklist guidelines. Uh, go ahead and uh, Marion, you can help me with this. Uh, we'll go ahead and go into our breakout rooms. We will end the exercise at 12.55 p.m. And then we will go ahead and resume uh, the presentations as the original as originally scheduled at 1 p.m. So this will be an abbreviated workshop. So if you wanna answer a question from Dr. Edwards' um, uh, essay and then move on to picking an item regarding my exercise or talking about um, how to properly cite sources, I'll leave that up to the team, but we will conclude everything in the, in the workshop at 12.55 and then we'll, uh, um, resume with a fantastic presentation from Chafee College on their rise to chapter success. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go in our breakout rooms and Miriam, you can go from here. All right, everybody, welcome back. So before we, uh, before we hear from our next presenter, uh, I have a little surprise for you. And uh, this comes with a really cute story. So when I uh, joined uh, the group for the regional officers planning sessions, and that's intended to, uh, to coordinate and develop our next fall leadership conference, one of our regional officers brought in this really adorable stress toy. So it's this, uh, it looks just like this, but hers was yellow and it's a little baby duck stress toy. So the surprise for you is that uh, I am uh, holding a contest. You must be present at the end of the boot camp to qualify. If you are interested, in taking part of this contest, uh, you need to email me, not text, not chat, but email me. So during um, the next few minutes, I will include my email address. The contest ends at 125, so I can get everything <laughs> together. So my email address is christine.low.ptk at gmail. Dot com. So you got to email me if you want to take part in this contest for this cute little duck. So there's a couple colors, white, yellow, and lavender. And uh, I will announce the winners uh, at the end of the boot camp. Now, for those who don't have time to present or to take part because they're presenting or they're moderating, 
don't worry, all presenters and all moderators are getting this. So this is courtesy of what we call an alumni angel. <laughs> but I also want to thank uh, Florence and um, uh, and Jerry for <laughs> bringing these cute little toys to life. And I thought I would share something that was really cute and adorable that matches our theme for getting your honors in action ducks in a row. And so uh, for presenters and moderators, this will be uh, coming to a home near you <laughs> or at your home within the next couple of weeks. And uh, 10 winners um, will receive this cute little deck. So again, we've got a couple of choices. I won't give you a choice because you'll just get them based on the colors we have, but there's lavender, there's yellow, and there's white as well. So anyway, good luck in the contest. Email me and uh, good luck. All right. So I'd like to introduce uh, our next moderator. She is, uh, again, we all become dear friends and family. She currently serves as our director at large at a, a, with our alumni association. But what's really cool about Stephanie is that because of Phi Theta Kappa, she became a successful transfer student. And just uh, a couple months ago, she graduated from UC Davis. So congratulations, Stephanie. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to my dear friend and teammate, Stephanie Mutialu. Thank you, President Lowe. I appreciate that generous introduction. Hello, PTK family. I, would, I have the honor of today of introducing Nicole Barbary. She has been a full-time faculty member of the psychology department at Shafee since 2012. Prior to this position, she taught part-time at five colleges over six years, including teaching biology labs at the University of Southern California, Los Angeles. Additionally, to, additional to her role as a professor of psychology at Shafee, she is a PTK advisor for the Shafee chapter of Beta Kappa Pi, co-facilitator of the community advising program and a member of the behavioral intervention team. Before she began her teaching career, Nicole worked as a research assistant, assistant at UCLA's Semmel Institute of Neuroscience and Human Behavior, as well as a Harbor UCLA's Biomedical Research Institute. In her free time, she enjoys spending time with her two teenage children, reading, visiting amusement parks, and dancing. I have the pleasure again of introducing Nicole Barbary. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, so one of the schools that I taught at part-time was Santa Ana, and I, I just found out today that Sal is part of that college, and I love that college. I loved the people there, so it's really cool to have that connection with Sal. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy to be here, excited that I was invited and very proud of our success because we are now a five-star chapter for the first time in Chafee um, history since we um, chartered our, our chapter. So I will go ahead and share our story with you and then some of the strategies that we've used um, to move from that one-star to a five-star level. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Are you able to see that, see the Chafee? All right, great. So um, yeah, so this is the road to success. Let me see if I can, I don't know if it's not, it's not changing, hold on one sec. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the road from one to five stars. So uh, we chartered originally in 2002 and I became the advisor in 2019. And what I noticed is that entire time we only had a one star level rating. So the things that they were doing consistently since inception was holding scholarship workshops and those were very successful. So I adopted that strategy. We had a lot of students that would complete the applications. And for so many years, we've had one to five recipients of many scholarships, including the big ones, the Coca-Cola, all academic team awards. So the scholarship workshops were working very successful. That was one thing they always did. Um, and I maintained that they would just send the emails to students to encourage membership. But at that time, they weren't including extra workshops or meetings to try to encourage new members to join. Um, 
and then they would participate at charity events. So I'm continuing that tailgate, trunk or treat, getting our name out there, helping the community. So we're still continuing with those things we've adopted. Um, they've had monthly meetings and then they would um, share the award recipients. And it used to be that the award recipients for the Coca-Cola Academic Team Award would go to a luncheon. And so my dean would facilitate that and she would pay for transportation and make sure that those recipients would get to that luncheon with their families where they were honored. Um, and so that was a wonderful thing that she was able to offer through the budget of her area. Um, unfortunately, they weren't reporting um, to keep us updated. So I think maybe they could have been at the two-star level if I'm guessing correctly, but they weren't reporting. And so when I came on, um, I was you know, gifted with this wonderful role of the advisor from 2019 um, until currently, I'm still the advisor. So I, I've served for three years so far. This is my fourth year. Um, and I just was overwhelmed because there's just so much information. There's so much to do. So I kind of took the beginning as a way to just gather information about PTK. And that helped me so much. The videos were really helpful. The advisor training online, I learned so much about my role and strategies and some of the things other chapters were doing. So that was very helpful for me to get started. And when I planned the first member meeting in the fall to recruit eligible for, uh, students uh, for membership and just to start you know, our, our process and elect new officers, um, as I organized that meeting, I decided to include the recipients of the scholarships. And I thought, what better way to share the benefits of PTK than have these recipients of these awards um, share their experience and also share how they became a good candidate for that award. And so um, I thought that was really successful. And a lot of students were encouraged by those recipients when they shared that they did community service. They were, you know, um, they had a lot of volunteer uh, experience. So it's all about community, PTK scholarship, and all those other things they were doing, but they were sharing their advice. And so that got a lot of students excited, I think. And that is where we had this great officer team with full of ideas, they were excited. So I think that really made a big difference for us with um, that first meeting being so successful. Um, and then since then, all of our other meetings were taken over by the officers. So that's all I had to do. And since then I've just, you know, guided the uh, advisors, the, I mean, I'm sorry, the officers and the members, but they just come up with their own ideas and they run with it and they'll do many things that I don't even think about. So. So now this first year, these are the th things we were doing. So some of these things you see, they were you know, consistent with the former advisors, um, but we started the college project um, at this time for the first time. Unfortunately, it was incomplete because it was a pandemic. And so right after they cleaned up this greenhouse for the biology department, then we couldn't complete it. And it was just you know a time of chaos and everything shut down. So we just had to stop. and we. We stopped our planning for the induction ceremony as well. Um, and we, we did not even have a Zoom induction ceremony, unfortunately, because we just didn't know how to do that at that time. Um, but we were networking this first year. Miriam Moody was uh, very helpful. She came to one of our meetings and she shared what her chapter does. She told us more about PTK. And so I was learning so much this first year, but our officers were listening and they were learning as well. So that made a big difference. So networking with other clubs, I think is key. Um, and then we would entice members to join meetings and to get involved more in what we were doing. Um, the way we enticed members, this always works, just bring food. So I would bring pizza or donuts, we use some of our budget for that. And uh, it was really well spent because we did get a lot of people coming to our meetings. <laughs> Even if they only wanted food to start, they left excited about what we were doing and they wanted to be involved. We would also have raffle fun games and, and give prizes like Amazon gift cards, like $10 gift cards. And that was really great to get more members involved. Um, we also at this time got the involvement of administration. And it's twofold the way that we connected with our administration. One is I reached out to them, I emailed them and shared what we were doing with you know our president. And Dr. Shannon is alumni to PTK. So he, of course, was very supportive, so we were lucky, but that was a huge piece of um, getting our, our recognition 
and getting more support from administration. But I didn't do that alone. Some of the officers, this new team of officers, they reached out to administration on their own and set up a meeting with the president and just said, you know, we want to help our community. What are the things that you need? And they took notes and they just started building a great reputation with our administration. And I think that made a huge difference and got us started, started on the right path. Um, we started social media and more award recipients. And yeah, the, these are pictures that I pulled from the college project. And I miss this group of students like every year. I say hi to new members, new officers, and have to say goodbye to them as well. Um, some of them may are they may be there, but so I have to say goodbye to most of these students here, but they worked so hard on cleaning up this area because the, the goal for the college project for them was to um, have an area of Zen and peace for students to come in and give a plant and take a plant and just, you know, just be in a nice space. And it was pretty neglected. And that's what they noticed was a problem. And then they worked with the biology department and asking questions on, is this okay? And they had to go through a, a lot of um, forms and processes, but they made it happen. Um, and so that's our first college project. We just didn't complete it. So we weren't a uh, five star, but we were a three star at that time. The next year, 2020 to 2021, we became a four star chapter. And that's because we got involved in the fall leadership conference. Thanks to Christine uh, and Miriam, they pulled us in. And they invited us and we're, we're like, well, how can we say no to that? Sure. You know, they said, oh yeah, the, the um, leaders that if they facilitate workshops, your officers or members, then we'll pay for their registration fee. So like, oh, that's a win-win. And I asked the new officers, they were newly elected and they said yes as well. And they were not necessarily the most confident, but they knew that we all believed in them. And Christine and Miriam just kind of, letting us know that they'll support us. So it led to presentations at that first uh, Zoom fall leadership conference that Chafee has ever been a part of. And um, that was wonderful. And um, we had an induction ceremony where we invited Christine as well. So you can, probably, you can see her right here in the middle. And my dean was part of that. So we had administration, we had PTK um, alumni supporting us in our induction ceremony. So we were just very involved. Um, and the president of our college, uh, that's uh, Dr. Shannon, he sent in a video for this Zoom fall leadership conference. And that's when we learned he was alumni to PTK and how much he supported us. And it was a great video. He gave some advice uh, and just encouraged all the scholars, scholars that were there. So it was really wonderful. Um, and then we started fundraising for the first time this year. And we had a really successful event where we raised, I think about, I don't remember exactly, but about 4,000 to 6,000. Uh, I know because we did other small fundraising things, but that one was a huge one and it was a dinner and it was really fun. We had a DJ, we had a silent, or not a silent auction, but a regular auction. And it was just very successful. And we wanna do that more often, um, but we kind of had a trade off um, because we needed to, become a five-star chapter and we just had to kind of choose our goals. And so that's what happened this last year. But at, after this year, we became a four-star chapter for the first time. So we we're just keeping the momentum going, very excited about what we were doing. Um, and then we finally did complete a college project. And this one was different than the one I showed you pictures of. Um, this was a workshop to help students be successful. Um, and so we've completed that first project we started planning the HIA project as well, but uh, we kind of did it at the same time and we assigned the same officers and members to complete both. And I think that was a mistake because we weren't able to complete everything because it was just kind of like everyone was distracted by all the different goals that they were working on instead of just a few groups of students that were working on you know, each project. So that was something that I learned from. Um, and then we had, again, more award recipients. And what I started doing is just sending out a message, an email to our president and to all these deans about this success. Like, look at our students, look at these awards they're getting. They're getting recognized with the state level. And um, then after that, they started contacting me and the, the newspaper for our campus, The Breeze wanted to interview us and the students that received 
the award. And then the president put on his president's update on the first page this year that I think it was this year or the following year, but he put um, you know something about PTK and how what all the good work we were doing on campus. And so all of a sudden everyone knew our name and we started getting more support. Um, so I think that was really great. Um, and then again, <laughs> it was nice of Christy. I, one of our uh, officers actually connected with her before I met her. And they did it for this reason to become, to be in our um, induction ceremony. And so then I became uh, friends with Christine and then we started working on other things together. So that was very helpful. Uh, the, the new accomplishments we have the next year, 2021 to 2022, again, four star. And that's because we were involved at the regional level. So we had one of our members, Chenya Sun, she ran for regional VP at the convention, the spring convention. And I didn't really, I, I didn't know who she was at that time actually. And she just shared in our group meet that she won. <laughs> we were all like so happy and surprised. Um, but that's one way that you can get the four star recognition as well is you know, being connected at that higher level. Um, more presentations uh, by, the, um, by some of our officers, they facilitated um, some of those workshops. And this was our fundraiser dinner. Dr. Shannon also attended our Zoom induction ceremony this year. Uh, and then this was the year that EOPS started collaborating with us. So now EOPS pays for student members, members if they're EOPS students and they're eligible for PTK. So now we work with EOPS and they fund so many students. Um, so that's wonderful. Um, and then here is a picture or a couple pictures that I showed from the Fall Leadership Conference 2021, still in Zoom, um, but you can see Dr. Shannon, his video message there, and then we have our um, officers here that were also part of this. And then you see Brooklyn, and she's been an officer for a couple years, and now she is the regional president, so we're very proud of these officers and their accomplishments. This was our induction ceremony, I'm sorry, not our induction ceremony, this is our fundraising dinner, and this was a great event. We had, like I said, a DJ. Um, we sold tickets for, you know, $40 a piece, but it cost everyone to eat like $15 to $20. And the foundation would set up uh, links so that people could just pay with credit card and they knew how much they were donating with that ticket and how much the food cost. Um, and that was very, very successful. Um, and that was fun too. And then finally, last year, 2022, 2023, we became a five-star chapter. And that's because we've done all those things I've mentioned before, plus we completed the HIA project and reported those uh, projects that we completed, the Hallmark Awards um, reports, that's what we did. We, um, and then we also had a nice surprise uh, Hallmark Award for our regional VP, Chenya Sun. And we honored her with her uh, award that she got um, at our induction ceremony. And this last year was the first time we had an in-person induction ceremony as well. So that was a lot of fun. And we worked with another group on campus, the honors program, and it was even more successful. We shared budget. And so that's another strategy I would suggest. We hosted the fall leadership conference for the Nevada, California region. And here's a picture on the right hand side of us hosting this, you know, bringing the goodie bags and, and just being supportive. And two of our officers, um, they presented at one of these workshops. And then Chinya Sun presented a, as well, a few things. So this is our group. And this was, you know, all the involvement we had. And we had some, some of our members join our officers and attend these conferences, which was great. And then one of our fundraisers that we had last year, instead of the dinner, Last year, we did a Pi Professor event, and that was, again, very successful, um, and it was fun and engaging, and again, it's a good positive way to get your, your name out and get more support as you go, because people know who you are, and they know you're a fun group. This is our group um, table with Pi Professor, and there's a, a few of us got Pi. Um, I have, I think, like nine or 10 professors that signed up. I just recruited them, and they signed up for this. They got five, and everyone had so much fun with it all day. Um, and this was our induction ceremony in person. We invited um, the super, the, uh, the assistant superintendent, um, and that was Laura Hope. And so 
she was our keynote speaker as well. So again, just pulling in administration, I think makes a big difference and they're so proud of what you're doing and they see the students more than anything. And they're very proud of our scholars and how many we have and how involved they are and all the community service they do. Um, so that's another strategy that we started to do. Um, and so yeah, there's a distinguished regional officer, Chen Yu Sun, right in the front. And here is Brooklyn Ascarino Searcher. She is the new regional president. So, and she's still in high school, by the way. So she was a freshman, her first um, officer position. Then she moved into our president officer position last year. And now here she is at the higher level already. So, um, so we're very proud of her. Yay, congrats, Brooklyn. If you're here, I didn't know she was going to come. But anyway, she should be recognized because we're very proud of her. Um, and just the last things I'll just say about kind of moving from the one star to the five star is that it's important to set goals that are reasonable. And I knew that it was just a lot to learn for me as a new advisor without a lot of support. Um, if you've had advisors doing a lot of this stuff before, it's probably easier, but I didn't have all of that support. So I just kind of set realistic goals. And every time we moved up a level, we were excited, we were proud. Um, and networking just gives you so much more than you can imagine because you just don't realize the potential. I wouldn't, and so now we we have new procedures. And one of those is every time we have a new officer group, what we do is we fund their registration fee to the fall leadership conference because that starts off our year very, in a very successful way because now they know what PPK is all about and they don't have as many questions as they would if they weren't involved um, at that level right away. So part of our fundraising is to do that, is to support not only the officers, um, we, that's my dean and I decided that's such a good way to spend that money um, and she'll help me with induction ceremony money cost, um, but we fundraise for the next year, for the next group. And we try to get more so that we can support not only the officers, but also members that wanna go. And we successfully did that. We had so many members wanna go and with our money, that we fundraised, we had plenty. And we used some of that money to support members as well. We have raffles for those that can't afford the membership fee and would like to have that waived. And those are the things we're doing now with the money that we're raising in our fun, exciting fundraising. So yeah, it's just about the group you choose and the momentum and the enthusiasm. And I think it just makes all the difference. If you just guide these students, they're going to run with it and come up with more ideas and reach out to people that you wouldn't even think to reach out to, like Christine. And now we're so happy. I don't know what where we would be without her and without Miriam, of course. And Miriam has helped me with so many other issues that have kind of come up for an advisor, a new advisor like myself. So, so just reach out. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Check out all the videos online. Um, and yeah, that's it. How we became a stars, yay! <laughs> Any questions? I see a hand, Susan. Oh, you were just clapping. It's just not a real hand. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations, well done. Thanks, thank you. Uh, this is Christine, and this is probably more of a comment. Um, for new members, one of the great things about being a member of Phi Theta Kappa is really getting to know the advisors. Uh, they are the backbone of the Honor Society, and it's such a bonus to have amazing advisors. I see many of you right now. I see Lynette from Great Basin College. Um, uh, I know that we have a, a Michelle Geisert, who's an advisor at the Georgia region, and of course, working with Nicole. And the, the great thing about um, working with your advisors, you, you, you know, you get to work with them on, on team projects, but, you know, their enthusiasm, uh, the motivation that they have, uh, and, and the sacrifices they make, you know, juggling um, teaching or working at, at the college, uh, they have families, they have pets, and and so there's a lot that advisors take on, and so they're very uh, very much unsung heroes. And so, uh, the big bonus was really uh, 
just not only working with Nicole, but just really becoming a, a, a good friend. And uh, so don't forget to recognize and honor your advisors. They really do so much for you. And um, and just, just for a, a quick question, and I know I was juggling and taking care of some texts and so forth. Um, what made you think about becoming an advisor in the first place? I know if you present, I apologize, but um, why Phi Theta Kappa? I know there, I know Phi Theta Kappa in, in our region is not the only dish in the Honor Society menu, but why Phi Theta Kappa? Well, it was serendipitous. Basically, someone came up to me and he was going to retire from advising PTK. Um, and so he asked me to do it. And I had been a student at a community college myself at P Pasadena City College before I transferred to Cal State Long Beach. And I was part of Alpha Gamma Sigma. Um, I, I wished as a student, I got more involved in it, but it was great. I got to put it on my resume. And, and so I just remember being a student and having that honor and just, you have it for the rest of your life. So that was, you know, something that, that reeled me in like, oh, of course, this is a no brainer. Of course, I'll take this on. This is exciting. And I just love working with scholars. I mean, all students, it's so rewarding, but it's, it, it's inspiring because you see, you know, all the work they put into it. And, you know, sometimes students, they don't understand that everything they do matters, everything. And so they, they might not know how to sell themselves later when they're at their, in their interview for their dream job yet, but if they're, they are planting those seeds, right? They're working hard. And so sometimes we have to give some students a little bit of motivation in different ways. And one of the things that I think helps is when I say, you know, all this work you're doing, you're helping, you're an active member, you're involved, and it's a lot of work. First of all, you're building the muscles. So when life gets harder, you know how to manage it better, right? But also you, you, I'm watching you. I know how you guys communicate on the group me. I'm watching that. So your communication skills are shown through just your interaction with others. Um, and then also I can write a strong recommendation for you for schools, right? And, and how many opportunities do you have? Sometimes you'll be at the university and the professor doesn't know your work. They have assistants grading your papers or your tests, but they, they don't really know. But if you have specifics, you can have a very strong letter and you know these scholarships are available from all the work you're doing, community service, volunteering, just building leadership skills through it. You know, so sometimes I think um, that makes a difference for some students when we're transparent about the, the activities they're doing and what the involvement means, what they're getting out of it. And some just do it because a lot of students, at, PTK students, are self-disciplined and motivated. So a lot of them they don't really need that. But I think that's an extra that I throw in there all the time. Like, hey, just get involved. It doesn't matter what you do, but you're going to, at some point on your application for school, on your scholarship applications, for your job interviews, you're going to want this type of experience, right? In addition to all the other things you're doing. So yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I love it. Yeah, I love being involved with them, with my PTK students. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Any, any other questions for Nicole? Okay, I think we're good. Well, thank you so much again, Nicole, for a, an awesome presentation. It was nice to, to, to cheat and take a look at your presentation beforehand. So I'm just, I'm so proud of what your chapter has accomplished and especially for you just juggling motherhood and career and, and then adding on this extra challenge of being a Phi Theta Kappa advisor. So I hope one of these days we'll see you at a, a Hallmark Awards uh, ceremony sometime in the very new future. You very much deserve it as well as all the advisors who are here today. It's such a pleasure to see to see you. It really, uh, that's one of the reasons I really love uh, this job as an alumni association officer to host an event like this and T3s and Oh, it's wonderful occasions to see you, if not virtually, uh, even better and in person. So thank you, Nicole. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, what I will do is let me see if I can get back into sharing my screen here. Make sure that I'm on track with everything else. Okay. So we've done our workshop. Uh, let me see. 
go back to the current slide here. <clears throat> okay, so you know, I know that uh, we had an abbreviated interactive workshop. Just you know, take these uh, all this information you received home, uh, and uh, don't worry if you didn't even get a question answered or anything check mark. This is something that will just to help you along the way in your honors and action uh, project. And let me just make sure that I've got other. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to have the raffle and afterward we're going to have some inspirational words from uh, the president of a chapter that actually won a hallmark award for honors in action and so i've asked her to speak for a couple minutes on that and then just give you some upcoming events and dates so even though you won a ducky i still want you to stick around because um i you've made it all the way this far we'd love to see you through the very end so so um, <clears throat> being as uh, high tech as I am, um, this one was a little easier just to be low tech and just to get all of your emails. I got a lot, by the way, although no surprise because this little ducky so cute. So if you could trust me based on the honor code, I have all your names in a Phi Theta Kappa hat. So I'm gonna pick out 10 winners. The first one is, I, I think it's either Caroline in A. Tiffany or Tiffany A. Caroline, are you here? Yes, ma'am. All right, fantastic. So email Thank me you. your mailing address. Okay, next one. Thank you. Daniel Walker. Are you here, Daniel? Yes, hi, that's me. All <laughs> right, fantastic. So email me your mailing address. Oh, yeah. The next winner is Flint McGrath. Congratulations. All right. You here? Awesome. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. All so right. Excited. Awesome. Okay. Winner number four is Krista Roland. Krista, are you here? I am here. Thank you so much. All right. Fantastic. Congratulations. And email me your mailing address. Thank you. The next winner is Gwendolyn Daniel. Are you here, Gwendolyn? I'm here. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. So halfway through, shuffling really good. OK, the next. Winner is Alexis Gill. Are you here, Alexis? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I know everyone's just like holding their breath. Ah, oh, okay. Well, good. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> All right. There's a chance to get a little ducky. The winner, next winner is Cora Miller, Miller Antostasian. Cora, are you here? Yes. All right. Congratulations. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got three more. Shuffling this really good. The next winner is Naomi Dylan Sass. I see you. Yay, thank you. <laughs> All right, congratulations. All right, down to the final two. Winner number nine is Moen Tan. Yeah, I'm here. Fantastic. Okay. One more. Will it be you? Christine Lowe. Oh, I got one. Okay. The 10th and final winner is Fahil A. Salihi. Yes, I'm Fahil, here. Fahil, are you here? Yes. Thank All you. All right. Fantastic. So all of you winners, please email me your mailing address. You will get this within the next three weeks. I'll give you, give myself some time. And also, um, like I said, all the presenters and moderators 
we'll be getting a little baby duck. So that includes uh, Susan, Faustina, Sal, Nicole, Stephanie, Miriam in the background, and our next speaker. Um, our, oh, and before Melanie speaks, I also want to say a thank you, and you're getting a baby duck, Michelle Geisert and David Holloway. Thank you for making it all this way from Atlanta, Georgia to be here in this virtual event. It really means a lot, and this fulfills my goal of HIA Bootcamp Coast to Coast. I'm so excited to work with you on, on any future endeavors your, um, your region has. And uh, really, it, it's such a privilege to, uh, uh, to have you be a part of this event and let us know if there's any way our Alumni Association can return the favor. So thank you so much. And you will get a ducky as well. So congratulations. So our next guest uh, is Melanie Abrams. Uh, she is the former chapter president of the Beta Delta Omega, I'm cheating here, uh, chapter at uh, Mount San Jacinto College. Did I get that right? I sure hope I did. Cool. San Jacinto. Mm -hmm. so, well, yeah, um, I'm so grateful for Melanie to speak. I know there's been a lot going on uh, in recent days, but I'm so glad that you made it here today. And I'm so inspired to hear about your Hallmark award-winning journey, congratulations all, and to kind of conclude or make our way towards the conclusion of our HI8 bootcamp, would you be willing to share some words of inspiration? I would. <clears throat> so my first words of inspiration is I'm gonna lead you all in the best direction I can as a former president. I was also a scholarship officer, I was a vice president, and then I was the president. So please don't think that I just automatically became a president and I had to work my way around that school. Um, please do what Sal advised everybody. It's one of the best suggestions that anybody will give you in the HIA process, and that is to start with Research Edge. It will give you not only the backbone, because we have to remember what HIA is about, it's about research. We're researching, we're, we're, we have a reason why we're doing what we're doing, and that gives you such a tool to start with. I inspired my team as a president to complete it. Two of us completed it before the summer prior to our year was even over. So heading into HIA, I had myself, and I also had another officer who already had done the research edge. I convinced four other officers to do the research edge, and I kept going with it. I didn't only do it there, but I've done all the edges, all of them. So I could talk to my team and tell my team, I can't ask you to do what I'm not willing to do myself. So I did them to inspire them, inspire your team. It doesn't matter if you're the scholarship officer, if you're the secretary, the executive finance officer, or the, or the enhancement officer for your points. Work as a team and inspire each other delegate. It is one of the best things that a president or an officer in charge can do is to delegate work. S use each other's strengths because everybody has different strengths. And when you, it's like I say, it's like a circle and you're all out here and you all got strengths. But when you start bringing your, your strengths to the table, all of a sudden you have this fully complete unit. And for some reason, I'll tell you what, the award we won last year, our school had not won it in 11 years. I was so proud to have led that chapter, but it was not me that won the award. It is your team that wins the award. Never try to take credit. Never say it's me. Never say anything. It's always us. It's always a team. And when you keep the mentality going throughout your HIA progress, the moment it's done, you really honestly sit back and say, well, I hope we win something, but if we don't, man alive, did we work great as a team and did we make some awesome relationships and friendships for the rest of our lives? So that's what I can tell you that going forward for me, that's what worked for our team. There are two members of my chapter here today. I am so proud of both of them being here. Christina Milanis Fernandez and Naomi Sass are both part of the Beta Delta Omega chapter. If I did anything, I inspired two people from the past to get in and go to HIA boot camp. They're not my officers. They're not on my team. I'm not on their team anymore, but they're still here and they're still going forward. So that's what you can do, work as a team. That's really all I have, Christine. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you. And and uh, 
she's absolutely right. You know, we, we um, I may be the face of the Alumni Association, but this comes, you know, with a lot of uh, support from my mentors uh, who are either part of the Alumni Association or not a part of the Alumni Association, but I give them so much credit to where I am today. Um, we may be a Hallmark Award-winning Alumni Association, but that's because um, this was a, a team effort. It's not just me, it's not the VP, it's everybody in our Alumni Association, um, from everyone in our board, to the members, to you. And so we are Hallmark Award winners because of you. And um, it, it's such a pleasure to, to have events like this and to hear wonderful and encouraging words from Melanie. So thank you so much, Melanie. Um, so some final tips, um, just things that I gleaned from this Honors in Action workshop. Um, you know, as Nicole said, set reasonable and realistic goals. You, know, you don't have to be a, a five-star chapter uh, all the time. If you're feeling like you're just getting started, just do baby steps um, and just work your way, uh, collaborate with your, your college, with uh, your um, regional coordinator, Miriam Moody, with our alumni association. We love to help and we always try to find ways to give back in, if any, in any way possible. Uh, so, and thank you, Susan. It's always a wonderful, um, a refresher course to hear and, and see your presentations. I'm always learning something new. And uh, when I was in my breakout room, I know there was one um, in our group who talked about that they had so many questions, and, and especially after this boot camp. And I told them, you're not the only one. I'm still learning and I still have questions. So Susan is only an email, um, a email address away. And uh, she's exceptional when it comes to getting back to you. So thank you once again, Susan. Um, I, I still geek out, but it's nice to still call you Susan. And, and uh, it's just always a real treasure to work with you. I admired you from afar when I was a chapter a member. And now I'm, I, I work with you. And so it, it's a, really a dream come true to, to work with you. And thank you very much. And of course, Sal, you know, my longtime mentor and friend, um, Sal was one of the first advisors to really welcome me as part of Phi Theta Kappa. I was not a spring chicken when, uh, or a duck, a baby duck, <laughs> when I became a, a member of Phi Theta Kappa. But he and Kurt Meyer were, were the first two advisors outside of my college to really welcome me. I felt really self-conscious uh, being an older student because I was approaching 40 at the time. They said, don't worry, you're going to fit right in. The average age is probably in your early 30s. And, and, and it's true. There are definitely folks who put me to shame because they're much younger at heart than I am. And so, and they're, they're proud members of Phi Theta Kappa. And so it's, I, I thank you all for your wonderful presentations and, and really learning a lot. And, and this will definitely help me when I uh, judge the next round of honors in action or project if I'm invited to do so. I really hope that I will be. Um, so some wonderful tips. And then um, from my own presentation, when you do submit your Hallmark Award entries, don't forget to take advantage of those opportunities to submit photos, flyers, charts, table. They really bring your uh, honors in action project to life. And you know, talking about photos, and you'll hear this on one of the workshops um, from our Alumni Association uh, website, is that your photos, it's great if you have a group photo, but active photos are even better. Seeing what you are doing in, in your project, what's taking place, um, that really does uh, put uh, a lot of life into reading your project and actually seeing, and just it adds, it just heightens that, uh, level of uh, professionalism and um, you know, art articulation that you put into your project. So with all those final tips, um, I wish you all the best. And I'm going to go ahead and share the screen for the last time. Okay, so we have uh, completed our raffle. And thank you. I'm getting your emails. So I look forward to mailing you your baby ducks. Okay, so I'm going to click onto one bar here. So I'm going blind, Miriam, uh, in terms of not seeing your wonderful faces. So I just wanted to uh, make a few announcements here. Um, our Alumni Association is gonna be part of the Scholar Dash. 
And I'm really excited about this. And I thank our um, AAB officers. At that time, it was Sheila Burson and now it's uh, Jillian Shrigan, who um, encouraged us to take part of the Scholar Dash. So I will be representing our Alumni Association and our Executive Vice President, Faustina Washburn, will be joining me. Um, I do admit I do need to register for that, so I'll take care of that. But it is a fundraising opportunity that uh, it, that enables you know, the, the money that's raised will help uh, provide scholarships for new members of our honor society. Um, Susan, if you can correct me with the name of the opportunity, uh, scholarships is escaping me right now, but I uh, appreciate your understanding. Um, but uh, I will be uh, taking part in the Scholar Dash on Saturday, September the 16th. I'm a member of Facebook. And so if you wanna, um, see photos of me, I'll also post photos in our alumni uh, Facebook page. We also have our fall leadership conference that is scheduled for Friday and Saturday, the 20th and the 21st of October, 2023. So all of you little uh, duck winners, if you're able to uh, take part of our uh, uh, fall leadership conference, bring a duck with you. I'd love to take some photos and maybe we'll just develop a new duck dynasty. Oh, that's such a bad joke. Sorry, but I had to use it. Um, we also have uh, our uh, chapter president's retreat. This is our second annual uh, event that we're hosting. And this is a, a retreat that both uh, our regional president, uh, Brooklyn and I co-host. So I'll be leading uh, the uh, first retreat, which will be scheduled for November, 2023. I'll send more information and the date and the time uh, through the regional listserv by Miriam. So thank you for sending those and all the announcements for HIA Bootcamp and all the events that our Alumni Association hosts. So that will go out sometime, probably before the Fall Leadership Conference, since we'll be busy getting ready for the uh, conference. Uh, our next TA3 event will also take place in November, 2023. Uh, really scaled that back a little bit just to, um, for all the wonderful things that has happened in our Alumni Association which included uh, um, presenting the alumni playbook, which was the secrets of our success of how we became a successful alumni association. Very similar to what Nicole presented uh, today, we had something similar at Catalyst. And so that was such a tremendous honor. And we're also giving future presentations uh, um, uh, virtually through uh, the Alumni Association Board, which is the headquarters uh, version of our alumni association, our level of, of our alumni association. So, um, and then the uh, PTK 101 in Spanish is really beginning to pick up steam here. So because of that, um, we haven't had as many TIA 3 events, but it's something that I always look forward to every year. And then finally, uh, we have our Hallmarks hotline. And so Susan and I, co-presented this back in early January. My husband had COVID in December, so we bumped it to early January. And that's to field any questions that you have regarding your uh, honors and action projects before they're submitted. Um, there may be one additional event, which um, I'll have to collaborate a, a little later with another group. So hopefully we'll have another, um, perhaps a, a third honors and action related uh, event to help you continue your journey of success. And hopefully that will filter through via college projects to recognizing individuals like the member officers and advisors. Hint, 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 to recognize your advisors to Hallmark Awards or uh, categories are for them as well. So on this note, I'd like to congratulate you all on surviving Honors in Action Bootcamp. Uh, you have uh, given me seven, as in seven themes. You have endured uh, four hours of presentations, which causes a little bit of a information overload. But um, don't worry, this will happen again at the Fall Leadership Conference and at the Spring Convention, um, but it's all intended to help you. This, will, this is a recorded event, and so you'll get the recording. Probably, I'm going to be conservative within probably the next three weeks, and the presentations will be announced as well and presented in the workshop workshop sections of our alumni webpage. So with that said, I congratulate you all and you are now graduates of Honors in Action Bootcamp.
And for those who have the baby ducks, please bring them to the Fall Leadership Conference if you can. And again, it's been a real pleasure to be with you this afternoon. We are ending uh, eight minutes early and you are more than welcome to stick around. If I can ask the presenters and moderators to stick around as well as, uh, as, well as Melanie, I know you came at the last minute. I would love for you to stick around and actually uh, advisors as well. If I could just say a quick word of thanks to all the advisors who uh, came on board and um, and then also uh, our fine friends at, from the Atlanta, uh, I'm sorry, the Georgia region, if you can also stick around, that would be fantastic. But for everyone else, all the best of luck to you. We are just an email away and uh, please contact us. We are here to help. So thank you everyone and have a wonderful weekend.